Depend on the garments. <laughs> I should. Oh. If I had, if I had depends on, I would even have to leave to go to the restroom. I could just sit here and just do my thing. He, he would just make stuff. uncomfortable so noises during the stream. Hey, hey, Look, wait, wait, hold it, on. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you sit down. Who doesn't yeah. know? Just grab a bottle. Yeah, you could be Porky Piggin and nobody would know. Just grab a bottle, dude. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'll just I'll uh, see, back to depends. That way we can do like a six-hour podcast, and then yeah. I'm how dangerous can we make this podcast? Yeah, I mean, well, you already admitted off air that you're in the lifestyle, the coffee lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I cannot, I cannot stay faithful or loyal to one brand of coffee. I will drink around as much as, as I need to, so to, to to fulfill my coffee needs. And we are live, guys. How you doing? Welcome to Caliber Corner number eighty. I wanted to give you some of the pre-chat hijinks that we enjoy on this podcast every week when we come to you. Uh, we're gonna let people come join us here, come join the class before we take attendance. We're gonna go and let the panel introduce themselves. A lot of fun stuff to talk about today. I have officially fallen down the ammunition reloading. No, Rabbit you haven't. No, 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 you're you're still looking. What yeah. looking? My press is sitting over here in a box. What are you talking no, about? No, 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 in a box. No. Yeah, you're still a baby. It's still in the box. Oh no, no, no. I'm already now I'm like doing stupid things like reading reviews on powder pour spoons and stuff. It's ridiculous. So anyway, oh, wow. you're doing there's a review yeah, on powder yeah. spoons. Yes. Like which, which oh, one man. should I buy the set? Should I buy Oh damn. I got to make one of those then. Yes, exactly. Hey, before, it is insane. Sketchy roll. Wake up over there. Uh, before I forget it. Yeah. Just, just use the RCBS charge master 1500 and be done with it. Bless you, my son. All right, so uh, we're also going to talk Four. about best deals for reloaders today. Uh, the 315 I am legend yeah. round. Hold on. And the future 3D printed firearms. Will the industry snuff out a burgeoning industry? Yes, Tony. Before I forget it, I heard a tip this morning that if your componentry for reloading gets static electricity in it, you can take it and wash it with Dawn in warm water and don't rinse it off. Just let it dry. Oh, and that will stop your components. Dye. Are you talking like the press and the dyes, or what are you talking about here, man? Like the cups that you weigh powder oh, in, or whoa, your powder no, 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 no. tray. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Wipe them down with a, a used, dish, used, uh, used um, softener. Yeah, that Dry dryer. <laughs> dryer yeah, sheet. use dryer yeah, sheet. Dryer yeah. sheet. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. That's what I've been told to do. Um, I have bought a box of dryer sheets. I do that. I just heard this tip this nope. morning and wanted to pass it on. Gotcha. Use no, one. I, yeah. Hey, That's let's go easy. ahead and let the uh, panel introduce themselves real quick, and we'll do some. We'll do a little roll call and see who's with us there. So, uh, Tony, we're going to start off with you. Uh, so, what's what is new in your world, man? You've been staying busy or what? Hell no, I'm Good. not doing a thing. Good for you. Good for you. Cool. Uh, yeah, man. Are you you busy reloading right now, Tony? No, I'm sitting here at the desk talking to you. Well, I understand that, but I mean, in general, you, you load anything, you having some good times reloading at all or not? No, but I, sure. I have been cleaning my loading bench off so I can get to it to do it. All right. Sweet, sweet. All right. Cool, man. Well, thank you for being with us. Episode number 80. Tony, I think you've been with us since episode number one. So, man, I appreciate you being here. Uh, well, punishment, I guess. <laughs> I guess so. We can't sleep in, right? All no, right. No, no, no Tony just gets paid in coffee. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> not yet. Not yet. Tony just does this out of the kindness of his heart, man. That's what it is. That's what it is. Uh, Squib, what's going on, man? What are you doing today? What are you doing? Oh, I'm actually at work. You know, last year, I think I worked four Saturdays the entire year, and it's uh, mid-February, and I think I'm on my third one, so just a good sign. Overtime is a good thing. I mean, um, if you want to you get ahead, it is. So uh, if I don't unmute quick enough, that's because my hands are covered in grease or – Something like that. Sorry, man. Sounds like you're busy. So, no, I appreciate you being yeah, you here. Can hear Saturday, the, man. Yeah, you can hear the forklift in the background. I, when I'm when I'm on on air on the shows at night, I'm back here away from the main floor, and I swear they follow me around with the forklifts, and they purposely drive them in reverse, and that's <laughs> all you hear. Is beep beep. It's like, oh my goodness. Well, there's a lot of unloading going on at that time of the night, so there's a lot of reverse, uh, you know, um, forklift action, right? No, I think they drive back here in the back. For just to hide and and to annoy me, so well, you know, I bring it to all of you people. Going in reverse, what do you mean, you people? Drive a lot more stable. Just remember this, Squib. Always yield the right of way to a forklift because you're not going to win. All right. Uh, no, pedestrians <laughs> have the right of way per OSHA, so oh, but I'm going to lose. Yes, I will it's lose. Not going to matter because you ain't going to yeah, be guys, straight anymore. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, these guys don't follow safety protocols. So yeah, I better, I better get out of the way. Right, here he comes. Cool. Oh my god. 
All right. Well, you stay safe. Sand Hills, what's up, my brother? What are you doing, man? Good morning. Thanks for the invite. My voice. Oh, you sound sleepy. You sound sleepy. You waking up or what? Oh, I'm I'm awake. I just sound oh. like crap right now. Were you sick last week? Is that what's going on? We didn't get you for two A Tuesday, right? It was the combination of yeah, head cold setting in, and my uh, voice. My voice still isn't. Oh yeah, it, there's it to, to quit me, or my throat just gets scratchy, and and my voice decides to give out. But uh, uh, that <clears throat> and State of the Union being go, you know, that was on at the same time. So I figured that uh, we weren't going to have a whole lot of whole lot of turnout anyway. So I just took a week off, and yeah, this next week is still up in the air too. So All right. That's what Hill's doing saying he's going through pu pu puberty again. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey guys, welcome to Do A Tuesday. Uh, no, if you want, I can do I can do Travi Tuesday if you want. We can do Travi Tuesday night. <laughs> we can we can figure something out. I, I'll probably be out of town Tuesday night, but I still may get a chance to okay. to go live. We'll see. But right. uh I'll I'll let everybody know kind of what's going on. Um All right. as the as Tuesday unfolds. I won't probably know until till Tuesday night. So Okay. But we will plan on our regularly scheduled time slot after next week for sure. I saw you had a listed for the 18th. Is that right? Uh, if I'm not uh, mistaken, 19th, I think it is 18th or 19th, 14th, 15th, 19th. Yeah, you're right. And, you're and right. we may be changing our uh, our topic that night. I might have um, I might have somebody from Walk the Talk America be able to join us that night. So if Ooh, that's the cool. case, then we'll we'll do that instead right of. On, instead of the constitutional carry chat that we were going to plan on. So, all right. Sounds good. Sounds good. Well, man, I appreciate you being here. And if you need to leave a rest or whatever, just give me a holler and, and we'll, we'll take over. So oh, appreciate it, man. cool, man. Just take care of yourself, dude. Nasty crud going around. All right. Joining us from Maryland. We've got David bowling in the house. David, what do you know, man? What's going on, bro? Uh, what do I know? Maryland's terrible. Don't come mm. here. Hey, come here. We got plenty of room for you. <laughs> Weather's about the same. You'll love it. <laughs> no, I'm doing good, man. Thanks for having me. Cool, cool, cool. So what's uh, what's coming up on the channel? Anything new that we can look for? Uh, I've got my Firearms Inventors playing card uh, series that's probably one day this week is going to come out. And then the most highly anticipated video ever in the history of any kind of media ever. Yes, yes. The Taco Bell French Fry Nacho review. Nacho Fries Challenge. It's that's right, man. Oof, I cannot today. wait to get your... To get your your, your your take on on this this delicious gourmet uh, <laughs> oof, just hearty fantastic snack so we, we can thank night strike for the arteries hardening on this one so that's cool man we'll be looking forward to it um are you putting those firearms um, inventors uh, videos on a playlist yeah I actually started okay. a playlist and cool. uh, when the next one comes out it's been a really cool experience uh, I talked about it before but uh mm -hmm. you know People make videos with the guns related to it, you know, just because or like Squib gave me a whole bunch of information. I mean, there's been a lot of external people helping out and making these videos and making them better. And uh, Andrew Faulkner actually made a video for my Henry Derringer. Well, not for mine, but when I put out the Henry Derringer, he had a bunch of pocket guns and some Derringers. Sweet. So I'm going to go back and link that to the original video and I'm going to put it in the the new video link since I didn't put it in the last one. Nice. And then uh, the poor conservative, I'm going to link his video into my playlist. He did a uh, Otis Smith pistol review and I was going to do the, the educational part behind it, but the video he put out is so good. I'm not even going to waste my time. I'm just going to link it into my playlist. You know, talk to some of these guys. If they have these guns, see if you can do a little collaboration video. You guys can both feature it on your channels where he'll give you some footage and then you can give him his and you can put it together and say, hey, all right, I'm going to show you, you know, I've got a buddy that has this gun. He's going to talk about it. You know, you can kind of work together and make a really cool video too because you can actually yeah. show off the firearm and talk about the inventor and, you know. Yeah, it's definitely open open to the public. If if you guys got information out there that's got to do with any of the firearms inventors or the specific card that I'm doing, or if you have some of the guns that you can show off in a video, I'll definitely promote it and I'll definitely link it in my video. So it'll be good for everybody. Cool, cool, cool. Awesome, man. Awesome. Uh, let's see. Foose. The Foose is loose. What's new in your world, bro? How you uh, doing, man? I'm doing good. Just finished breakfast. Ah, uh, yeah. Literally just finished breakfast. Just um, put that last bite in. What was for breakfast, Foose? You seem like um, an ego. You seem like an ego guy. You an ego guy? You do egos? Uh, egos and bacon? Know. Really? No. McGriddle? I am a sausage and eggs or bacon egg, bacon and eggs. Like That works. W whenever I 
open up a, a pound of thick cut bacon that li- lasts maybe two days. <laughs> yeah, yeah, my my opinion is that sausage, egg, and cheese is the holy trinity of breakfast foods, right there, because that makes anything wonderful. You know, mm-hmm. it doesn't matter what you put it on or what you put it in. Mm. Oh yeah, and, and usually, like, yeah. like, I mean, the only time I really have breakfast for breakfast is usually Saturday or Sunday morning. Every other time, yeah. it's for dinner. You know, yeah. Like, oh, oh yeah, yeah. So I'm not gonna be able to stay. For the entire time because i am taking a fairly new shooter out today cool and balmy 35 degree weather dude i would um, kill to have that right now man send some our way yeah um he's been in country for two and a half months he's from england oh so. cool all right uh yeah. tell us real quick about sports shooters ammunition where can we find it and why should we buy it from you sports shooters ammunition mm-hmm. it is rolled in arkansas up in a um, room in my house uh it is a it is a good training ammo um good price i'm trying to get ammo into people's hands so they can shoot more um for less that's it i'm not trying to make a a big bang out of it um if if i break even every year i'm happy Mm -hmm. i just want to get more people to shoot um, cool. I know there are several people on the channel that have uh, on gun channels and YouTube that have sh- shot it. I'm um, be I shoot it a lot well, because it's mine. Um, yeah, um, sports shooters ammunition at gmail.com. And uh, yeah, check, check it out Facebook. on Facebook. Over on yeah. Facebook, yeah, you don't have a regular website up and running, you're working on it. Mm-hmm. Um, I think a lot of us are going to be getting, we're going to be moving our websites to pro two a companies so we can host our websites and not have to worry about being shut down and so on. And so there's some transitioning going on for a lot of us that we're moving our, our websites over and or creating new websites. So hopefully well, you'll have a website up and running soon too. When well, you want the best ask for saw. <laughs> yeah. So the, the, <sighs> my issue that I'm finding right yeah. now is yeah. um, credit card payment. Um, I, if I do, kind of like the swipe type thing from your credit card from uh so being a business account you you have monthly fees and contracts that you have to sign for all this stuff to get it cheaper and the thing is i don't want to sign a four or five year contract with a credit card company because i am small i don't want to have to be like okay in two years i'm losing my butt on this i'm still got to pay you know, 20 bucks a month for the next several years or cancel it and pay six or $700 to get. Yeah. So yeah. I'm looking for lower price or uh, better options for myself uh, for that. And I'll, and having a card reader and an online presence together. Well, that, that can't happen on the same account for some weird reason. So what I'm finding is it'll be about 15 bucks a month for the, card reader and then about 30 35 for the online okay credit card so yeah it's not cheap you want to make sure you're moving the volume before you get yourself too heavily invested in it you know all i can mm-hmm. say is you're going to save a couple bucks versus what you're going to pay at walmart you're supporting small business you're supporting an american-run company i mean that's mm-hmm. that that's what makes me customer right there i burned through yeah. 300 rounds of it so far and not had an issue at all yeah. through two so, different guns yeah yeah so right now i have 125 grain uh projectiles uh, loading and i'm still in the development phases of a 147 grain so uh question for the orders what are your different methods of payment you can accept you can accept paypal Mm -hmm. uh are you set up for google pay yet at all no i haven't thought about that okay Uh, try look into and see if you can um Um, yeah you could i I am set up on on uh square so if you want to give your credit card i'll take it i'll as soon as it runs through that credit card information is ran through a shredder. So I, I, I won't even have it. Um, so I, I've done that for a couple people and it's worked fine. Yeah. Yeah. So cool, man. All right. Well, make sure you guys do check it out. So thanks yeah. for joining us. So, um, all right. I went, I loaded several thousand this, this week. I got, uh, probably about six or 7,000 in stock and I could roll another 10,000 if I want. I was going to do it today. And then this, uh, Opportunity came up to take a shooter out, so I'm on. Sweet. He, he's a World War II fanatic, so I'm going to have uh, uh, oh. Lee Enfield, uh, 
I'm going to have my uh, French Moss, uh, Moss 36 and then the Mauser. I'm going to take out with a couple pistols and I'm going to take a lever gun, 30-30, um, stuff like that. Cool, cool. Well, you guys will have a good time, man. Maybe you can convince him yeah. to move here. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, well, no, no. He married a friend of mine. Oh, so, I thought maybe he was from. Okay, okay. So he's not he, a, not an not a resident of Great Britain or whatever. So, well, no. I mean, he's he's in the process of getting ah, a green card and stuff. Okay, okay. Yeah. Cool, man. He, he is going to be relocating. Good deal. Yeah, well, he has. Well, keep well, him away from where? crazy Scotsman. They might have a little rivalry going on there. A little. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. All right, cool, man. All right, oh. Awag, Awag. What's up, bro? How you doing, man? How you doing, guys? We're doing good. Anyway, what, what can we find on your channel if we head over there? What's, what's to be found, anyway? Um, you find gun stuff. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I try to throw a little bit of humor in there. Mm -hmm. um, and if it's not humor based, it's probably something serious or uh, not not so much serious in the fact of oh, this is serious. But it's oh more yes, like, hey, yep. this is this is like a, a more uh, a, a semi more serious tone than the usual. Cracking jokes and making fun of people, kind of. Yeah, yeah. So I hear you, man. I hear. You. Well, I appreciate you being with us. You've been with us a lot on these episodes, and so it's good to have you here. And again, uh, we're just going to talk about a little bit. We'll get into this here in just a minute. Uh, where you buy your reloading components and who's got the best deals? Because we've had several discussions on reloading. There you go. And yeah, uh, we want to help people save some through. money, help some people get into it. And I'll talk about how I'm slowly falling down the rabbit hole of reloading myself. It's it's an addiction once you get into it. Stop before you get started. <laughs> ah, nah, just go for it. All right, so real quick, joining us this morning over on the Gun Channel side, we got Tony over there. Tony's over here. Paper Plane Crash is over there. Ohio 45 ACP is busy on the Progressive Press this morning, loading 45 ACP nonetheless. And uh, David's also over there. David's over here. On the YouTube side, we got the Kingpin with us, who's joining us today, too. Tacos and French Fries, Cam 94, Local 223, Fine 8, 1393. Cowboy Swami, Midnight Range was the first one to check in with us. Good morning, sir. J Rods, Donna G is joining us from Canada, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, sketchy rolls out there. Hopefully waking up Cowboy Swami. I did see SS Ponds joining in, so Stan is watching this morning, too. Fine 8, 1393. Chihuahua Choker. Okay, there you go. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Uh, Stephen Dawkins is out there too. Snake Doctor 78, Lockjaw in the house, Kinky Sphincter, Moo Butt. The usual suspects are all joining us today. Blue Steel 44, and I think that's about it. And Sandhills did check in with us. So we're going to go ahead and uh, get started here. Fine Ape says, give in to the dark side. I am in the dark side. I'm drinking lots and lots of coffee this morning. I've been doing coffee review videos before we even lit up uh, Caliber Corner this morning. Uh, Cam says he's got a Taurus Spectrum. He recently put 200 rounds through it with no light primer strikes or jams so far. Maybe Taurus got the uh, bugs worked out of that. So there you go. Yoder saying, quiet, please. I want to go back to sleep. Okay, Yoder, we'll do that just for you. Just kidding, man. Yoder, you got to wake up, buddy. Late check-in. Don't worry, man. You're with us. Yoder's with us today. So uh, as I'm getting into the world of reloading, uh, you know, I try to support local business as much as I can. I try to shop around a little bit. I try not to give Amazon all my money for things. Unfortunately, Amazon has been one of the least expensive places to buy reloading supplies. So I want to talk about all things reloading. Where do you guys go to get the best deals and what can you find at the best prices for all things reloading? I don't care if we're talking presses, dies, brass, bullets. What do you guys do? Foos, aside from buying in bulk, okay, what can you no, guys do no, I'll, I'll to save money on components and parts? And there's nothing wrong with buying in bulk, do. Because, yeah. I mean, you could save a ton of money on your brass if you do. But just like just getting started, where, where do you guys go to save money? I, I use um, a website called Graph and Sons. Okay. Um, they do have a sixty-five dollar limit or a sixty dollar limit on their um, on their website, so you have to spend sixty something dollars uh, in order for them to like ship to you. It's to um, make shipping reasonable. Yeah, um, but I get most of my like hazmat stuff from there, or if I'm in desperate need uh, for like powders or something, um, I'll run across the bridge to Delaware and go to. Uh, the Cabela is right in Christiana. So, um, yeah, so that's one thing to keep, keep in consideration when you're buying the, is there hazmat on primers and powder or yes. either or yes. both. both? So just go buy it locally. Just, it's right. worth the trip to save the 20, was it $25, and, $20 hazmat fee? No. And here's, here's the thing is if you're getting into reloading, it's best to have, um, I've, I've kind of learned this the hard way is if you want to do a lot of volume, uh, I more than a hundred rounds per every time you sit down, 
Um, invest in like your larger powders. Um, so instead of getting the one pound, go for like the eight pound jugs. That way you have a constant supply and you don't have to keep running out. Um, Get, so, and then your head. Oh, sorry. Buy whenever you do buy your eight pounds of powder, buy enough primers to do it for pistol. You can usually get 15 to 1600 rounds out of a pound. So if you buy eight pounds, get 10 pounds of powder, uh, 10, 10,000 primers and, or maybe even 12. And that'll help offset the $25. Um, yeah. Hazmat fee. And yeah, occasionally, the, hazmat um, fee, the hazmat fee is about 17 bucks. Shipping's like another 20. So expect to pay $37 on top of it. So if buying it locally doesn't, isn't, you know, you're just getting a little bit, you're just getting a couple hundred primers and a pound of powder. You know that, and you just you're just doing a a, a batch, or, or you just need some stuff. You you ran out, and you just need some stuff quick. That's one thing. If you decide you're going to order, I say go ahead and figure out how much money, you or how much how much you have to spend in order to recoup that thirty seven bucks. Because if your local sells a pound of powder for forty bucks, you can get it on Graph and Son for thirty. You know, all you got to do is buy you know, three pounds of powder. And you've already recouped the shipping and the hazmat. So it just depends. Sometimes online, their pricing is a dollar or two cheaper. And sometimes it's significantly cheaper. And then, like they were saying, if you buy four pounds or eight pounds, you do get a volume discount. What's funny is, like, one pound is 40 bucks. Four pounds is 85 bucks. Eight pounds is, like, 150 bucks. Something. So it, it exponentially gets cheaper per pound. But then you're, you're doling out more money uh, right off the get-go for that, that powder. So if you're new to reloading, I say start off with one pound. Yes, absolutely. And then as you decide which ones you're using a lot of, then you buy that in bulk. Mm. And if yeah. you can get a good deal online or they're waiving hazmat fees or something like that, it's a good time to buy a little bit extra. So, so yeah. Actually, Brownells had a sale, um, I think it was two days ago. It was if you spend 150 bucks, you get a one-cent um, hazmat fee. So uh, wow. I I took advantage of that and I actually nice. ended up buying a, a pound of powder, uh, not a pound, a uh, an eight pound jug of powder. So what about so, what about trying uh, buying directly from the companies instead of going through? Want, I mean, we mentioned okay, Graphic so, Sons, Brownells. What if you want to go through Hodgson or? So I, I, you know, I've, yeah. I've, I've I've tried this. Um, okay. You've got to be a distributor. You you can't buy directly from them. Yeah. Okay. You, okay. You, you have to have either an O one or O six. And Brownells then, right now. I don't know if it's still going on, but they have a uh, a, a sale. I guess it's called that free shipping. So if you need a pair of gloves, you have free shipping. Normally, I guess you have to what spend like sixty, a hundred bucks to get free shipping. Yeah, there's a charge of like six to eight, twelve dollars. Uh, okay. If it's still around. going on, so, then so. you can buy any amount of stuff as little wow. as possible, and it's all free shipping. That's awesome. So 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 back 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 to the buying from the company is you have to be you know 01 or, or 06 manufacturer or seller and then the volumes you have to purchase is crazy like whenever i was looking at fiochi because uh primers because they're 40 minutes away from me um usually it's 200 cases and 12,000 primers in a case so the in order to buy from the manufacturers, you have to buy absolute shit ton. Whenever you're starting out, of course, you're not going to have the money to do that on most people. Um, buy a pound, you know, go out there and say, I want to experiment with this powder, this powder, this powder. Buy a pound because you don't know what you're going to have. And yeah, I, 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 I so a buddy of mine, he's like, oh man, this great, this uh, powder is the bee's knees for, um, pistol so i'm like sweet i bought three eight pound jugs and in my on my machine it doesn't meter right mm -hmm. on his on his dylan he has a different powder pour it meters fine for him doesn't for me i have thirteen thousand rounds loaded up for practice that i have no idea what's well i mean i, I know they'll go bang and it'll clear the, yeah. the barrel but i that's about it and for him is fine, and I end up having to turn around and sell the, the two eight-pound jugs for a significant loss. Yeah, that's the thing. You want to make sure this is going to run well through your reloading equipment. I wouldn't – I mean, like, just because you find a good price on something, don't go buy the huge one-pound container unless you know that it's going to work eight for pound. you. 
or eight. I mean, well, I'm just saying even in general, you know, you want to start off with the smallest quantity you can to make sure it's going to work, you know, um, and then make sure it's going to cycle properly. Usually one and, ounce yeah. is the smallest. All right. I mean, well, no, uh, they're, they're all going to cycle. The thing is, yeah. if you put it, they're all going to cycle. It's, it's how consistent the powder pour is. Well, your like, powder, your powder charge, you know, things like that. Your, your chart, your charging uh, machine. Yeah. Now, if you have a trickler mm -hmm. or something like that, that isn't a big issue. But is if you if you start going by volume, then mm. it is. Oh yeah. Because you know sometimes they bridge. Sometimes you'll get more powder in there than the next one just because of the the way of the the flake is. Mm. Um, if you go by weight, you're going to go by weight, go by weight, go by weight. So it, it doesn't matter. But if you start going in higher volume or you know pistol or oh, I'm just going to take and want to load up whatever for my two, two, three, it's fine. But for you, if you want precision, you're going, always going to go by weight. So the, the flake doesn't matter because you go by weight. You don't go by volume. Okay. Uh, fine. Eight my, says that, go ahead, Tony. Something I'd suggest is scout around locally because my locals beating anybody I've ever found online for price. Hmm. So, okay. So, so for me, like, <clears throat> let's say I, I always use powder Valley. They are usually either the first or second cheapest that I've seen out there. And for a consumer, like for primers, $28 for a thousand CCIs. I go anywhere locally and it's 32, 35 plus tax. Just so as an example, I get the primers for 29, 99, 30 bucks in tax. Tight group, 1995 a pound. Yeah, if, if you are looking for pistol, start off with tight group. Tight group will do 9, 40, 45, 380, 357, 38, 357. It, yeah, and it's cheap, and you don't need a whole bunch of it. Um, I use accurate number 7 in my 357 SIG. So I need to get some accurate number 7 because a friend of mine is is – going to be shooting an open gun this year and accurate number seven is great for nine millimeter major loads and um because it produces a shit ton of gas yeah i use five so, seven and nine and i think i use probably more of seven and five and i use that in uh 762 by 25 toko mm -hmm. so um the the only issue that i have with accurate seven is it's very very thin and it does not meter well with the uh, the Lee, uh, uh, what is it? The perfect perfect powder, uh, perfect powder measure. Yeah, yeah, it does a, not meter at all. Is that a drum? Yeah. Crap, because that's what my hornies are. Mm. Yeah, um, okay. it, it gets between the uh, the, the the like the the outer casing and the drum itself, and then it just like oh. slows everything down. Okay, so so mine's a tighter fit. Okay. So I should be good. Okay. All right. I got a real quick question. Uh, yeah. What's the word meter mean? What is that supposed to mean? Is that, are you talking Pours, about way out? Powder pouring through. Mm -hmm. so, kind of, so, are we talking about like sand through an hourglass? Like how well it exactly. goes through? Okay. Well, so, These are the days of our lives. So, so, More so, or less. So <laughs> think about this. Think about measuring out rice in a half cup dry container whenever you cook. Okay. So – if you have different grains of rice, different types of rice, how it the shape is different, you're going to have a different weight, overall weight, um, for that same half cup of, of rice because there's more or less rice in it based on the um, shape of it. Well, some of these powders kind of look like a real small pancake, and some of those will start to bridge – and leave air gaps in it so of course your weight is going to be less and less so that that's that's how you could start thinking about um you know measuring stuff like you know going from rice to cinnamon cinnamon is a much finer grain yeah so you get a lot more into it yeah uh, let's, let's, okay. So fine ape says, I want to get to this point. Nosler sells factory second bullets for a steep discount. Bullets can be a very expensive part of the reloading process. Um, 
in my opinion, and brass. So let's talk about bullets. Where do you go and how do you so, get the best deal on bullets themselves? The best seconds are not bad at all. I've used them. No, they're not. Target shooting. They're, they're just, they're blemished. It's like getting a blem lower. That's all you're really getting. So, and they they're might not be form. They're not, there's not burrs so, in them or anything like that when you buy them. No. Okay. You buy I them use factory seconds, seconds for a lot of money. They're, they're factory seconds from Hornady or Winchester or whatever. And they're just in a blue box. that says Midway USA. Okay. Yeah. So I use a lot of factory second bullets um, to test loads mm -hmm. because I want to get the most accurate, inaccurate load possible. So that way, when I move up to that, the higher quality stuff, then I can have I can shrink those groups down even tighter. And this is a hand load that I did, which was twenty five point two pounds of uh, pounds. Grains. Listen to me, Jeez. holy crap, uh, son! Geez. Yeah, did you blow up your house? <laughs> no, man, no, no, I'm no, using no, a no. tank. <laughs> No, no, <sighs> that, that, that's 88 millimeter anti-aircraft yeah. gun. Yeah, basically. Yeah, basically. Man. All right, so, so anyway, um, is that 100 yards through your Howitt 223? Yes. Um, I actually think I did a video on this. I think. I don't know. Um, but basically, 25.2 uh, grains of CF-223 with bench rest primers. Uh, I know it's not really a good combination. I do use uh, 8208 XBR for... Um, uh, what is it? Uh, my super accurate bench bench rests uh, loads. So um, ultimately, this is the best group that I got out of the day. It was freezing outside. Um, what were you using for an optic on that? Were you just using a red dot, or were you using just no? Regular? I was using oh, uh, your, your uh, SWFA. Yep, okay. SWFA. And uh, oh, man, oddly you enough, should saying, you should be saying that you were shooting from the hip. Nah. <laughs> so here's here's the difference between um, and that's here's, eight shots, right? <laughs> yeah, that's some night strike accuracy there, but I'm boom. She needs not here. Um, I loaded though. five rounds of each uh, grain weight, um, and then yeah. I did three uh, a three round group, and then I did a two round group, uh, just so that I can get some consistency. Now I know some people use five round groups. Uh, at the time, I didn't. Yeah, um, but here's the difference between twenty five point two grains and twenty five grains, like. That that group size opened up a good two inches, so. Barrel harmonics. Uh, I don't know why yeah, barrel harmonics, harmonics are incredibly important. I don't so, know how why it's so hard to convince people of that specific fact. What's that? I talking? know the barrel, barrel harmonics. harmonics are the key to figuring out a load. Well, I mean, so so. <laughs> Again, whenever I start talking about you know, barrel harmonics stuff like that, think about throwing a football. If you throw one with a uh, spiral, it's going to go farther than if it's a – if you throw one that's all wobbly. Lobs, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, go ahead. sorry about that. I, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, and uh, did I see a um, one that tumbled on your 25 oh, point? No, that was – that that was um, – here. Yeah, these, these guys right here um, – yeah, and Dude. up here. That was, um, I tried testing a subsonic load. I actually love the little powder. It's called um, Trail Boss. It, it, the, the powder itself looks like little donuts. Um, yep. So basically, I was using a 75 green um, uh, Hornady, uh, what is it, the, the VMAX? Oh, VMAX, uh, but, yeah. But it was, um, I actually scared somebody at the range because um, how quiet the gun was because. I know it goes against the um, the grain of uh, of people reloading, but in order to find a subsonic load for trail boss in any rifle, is basically you fill the case all the way up with powder, scrape it off, and put a bullet on top of it, and that's your absolute maximum charge. We don't recommend that here on Caliber Corner. I right. just want to get that out right so, now. Uh, please make sure you measure your powder and be careful. Carry on. Well, well, but no, 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 with no, trail have... boss, that's how it is with trail boss. Any other powder, yeah, you don't All want right. to do that. No. Trail, just, bo Trail Boss yeah. is such a very slow-burning powder that, like, it's it's used for subsonic hand loads. And I actually scared a guy at the range by using that because it made my, my rifle went from being non-hearing safe to essentially hearing safe. And the guy's like, did you have a, 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 a misfire or, like, this he's like, we need to make the range go call. I'm like, no, it's just subsonic hey, handling. Shut up and mind his own business and just go on shooting. I mean, seriously. <laughs> and, and it's it's 
<laughs> it's really funny because when I looked through the scope, the round was moving so slow that you could see it. And sometimes it was like spinning sideways. And I was like, okay, this, yeah, we need to not do this. But it was yeah. going on yeah. onto the, the, um, onto the cardboard at a hundred yards. So it wasn't veering wildly off course. And so the other guy was like six rows down and probably like 25, 30 feet away from me. Yeah. So. yeah. Uh, so, when that so happened I, and the guy said that, you just said, no, no, this is my new rifle for Franklin Armory. Oh, yeah, no, the suppressor, really suppressor. The suppressor's start, built into the barrel. Yeah. It, it, so so <laughs> that's another thing. With, with hand loads, you can run subsonic, but there are loads for subsonics. Most of them are pistol uh, powders. Mm. Um, yeah. Like so blackout. Well, no, no. I mean, or is that like, use its own for subsonic? Yeah, but I mean, but that, that's one thing. But you you yeah. could run five five six six subsonic. It's not going to cycle your gun. Mm. Um, yeah. You could have AK subsonic. You could run three hundred wind mags in subsonic. It's just you have to have the right load for it, and there are load recipes for mm -hmm. subsonics. Um, yeah. Also, when we start getting into hand loads, casting is another thing. I run my. Uh, out of my 76254 and my um, 303 Brit hand loads. I mean, I, I cast my own projectiles. Yeah, you know, that's, mouse, that's what I, I cast do. my own projectiles. It's it's fun. It's it can be just as accurate. Like I'm I'm gonna take some out uh, today. I'm gonna have a whole bunch. I'm gonna go out and shoot. Hey, real quick, guys, we got Fine Ape joining us. So Fine Ape, what's going on, man? How you doing, bro? Welcome to Caliber Corner, dude. This is the first time you've ever been on here. See, might be good. What's going on, yeah. man? How you doing? Oh, I'm doing fine. Just coming off a 12-hour work shift, so. Oh, fun, oh. fun. Well, hey, what do you want to? What do you have to say about this whole discussion that we're having? I mean, we're just talking about finding good deals on reloading supplies. You know, tried and true places you've gone to. What works for you, man? Uh, first thing I would say, get the book. Oh yeah, always. always. A book. Yeah. Yeah, I got Not the mine in Italy it. books, and they're fantastic. So, one, one thing with the books. Lyman, Hornady, uh, and a, a lot of these, they kind of have their own niche. Like Hornady right there. It's like, okay, we're going to have all the low data for our pow for accurate powder and Vitavori and, you know, a couple companies. And, you know, they're going to have all their bullet, their bullets or their bullets. And another hey. one, Sierra has, you know, goes for their bullets. Lee, mm -hmm. it, it won't have everything, but it'll say, Oh, for 125 grain jacketed mm. here, and it'll have a lot mm. diff more powders. So, if you like a brand of powder, get a book that's specializing in that brand of powder. If you're not sure, the Lee book will have more comp more powders um, out there, but yeah. in, in less detail. And if you're just reloading for maybe one caliber, like all you want is to load 30 at six or uh, uh, 45 auto, I don't remember if it's Lyman or Lee comes out with just mm -hmm. caliber specific booklets, and it's going to have stuff from Hornady, from Sierra, from you know the with, Lyman and different cast. With Lee dies, you get the reload data with the dies. None of the yep. other manufacturers put that there, so you get that automatically. Another thing is. If you go to the manufacturer's websites for the powders, and in some cases the bullets, they'll have free reload data online too. Mm -hmm. yep. So there is more yep. than one way to skin a cat. Absolutely. Some of those yep. books are expensive. Everybody gets a Lyman oh. book because it's the least expensive, and it's not a bad book at all. But when Why? you start getting some of the other ones, yeah. you're going to be paying. And they come up with a new edition every so many years. And with them coming out with so many new calibers left and right because they can't innovate anymore, uh, you you know you're going to be getting more books, but I would say uh, when a new caliber comes out, if you want to start reloading for it, go to a go to like the Hodgson website or we'll the Sierra time. website, Western yeah. Powder, something like that first, just to see if they've got anything on it. I buy the books yeah. used. I just bought them used through Amazon and got them super cheap. I mean, I, I paid maybe maybe half of the cover price, and you can read the descriptions on the condition before you commit to buy. And I've got some nice used copies. They're they're fine. My Lyman oh. book was used. My my Lee oh. book was used. Also, I would say for the online uh, resources, um, Nosler and Hodgkin have the best interface as far as selecting your caliber and everything. And, and, and 
let's say you're one of these people like, hey, I want a paper copy, print it out. Like, yeah. like, uh, like yeah. um, um, for my yeah, I, I, I print them I and I put them on the. I open up my reload manuals and just stuff them in. So if mm-hmm. I'm printing 45 ACP data from uh, the Hodgson website, or, or yeah, from um, why did I just draw a blank there? Nosler, or one of the other ones. Then I'll just slip it in when you turn to the uh, manual, 45 ACP, it'll be right there. So it's additional data and because they will cover powders that aren't in there. Or they'll cover, sometimes it's just new stuff. It's it's kind of interesting. You know, I mean, like you can reload 45 ACP with shotgun powder if you wanted to. Oh, yeah. uh, mm-hmm. uh, 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 yeah. almost, almost all pistols you could reload with either pistol or shotgun. And that, that hand, that uh, casting book that Fine 8 had out there, that is really good. I have one as well. Um, I run a lot of my casts just like jacket bullets because I powder coat. Um, that one is for your traditional uh, wax type lube. Um, yeah. Or even sometimes some people will run lubeless. Um, but yeah, I mean, that, yeah. that's that book yeah. right there. Or sometimes you need to go and go back 10 or 15 years to get a book if you, let's say, have you know a 7 millimeter Mauser, Mauser or a you know, 280 Pedersen or something like that, they're not going to be in the new books. You may have to go back 10 or 15 years to find loading da- load data. Mm-hmm. So um, another thing that I use is an app on my phone. It is called Reloading Assistant. A little picture is of two 357 SIG uh, rounds. And it's, it, I guess this guy that made this app compiled through all the reloading books that you could, and he has a list of pretty much every single cartridge in all of the books with all of the powders and most of the bullet weights. And hey, uh, fine, can you flip the books around so we can see? Nope, and it's completely out? free. Thanks, buddy. Uh, the one I'm looking on on the app store is $4. There we go. Cool, man. Nice. Now, guys, what about what we still got to talk about brass? Uh, what do you guys recommend? I mean, me just getting started, I bought 100 rounds of unfired brand new 9 millimeter brass. Uh, so I can tell you brass. Yeah, I can tell you where Ohio 45 ACP has got the brass that he's using today from. <laughs> ah. it's, it's a good idea to have reloader buddies. Yes. Or it's a good idea to have yes. people who, shoot, who don't reload, who don't. Yep. who don't uh, care if they give you their, their brass. When you're at the range and, and you're picking up brass and some new shooter's there and they're going, what are you doing? What are you doing? And when you explain to them what reloading is, yep. I'm telling you what, over half the time, they'll put the they'll put their cases back in the cardboard box in the little inserts and <laughs> hand me these. And like, here, here, have mine. Here, have mine. You know, oh, so okay. it just, and you just bring up yeah. a conversation and next thing you know, you got free brass. Uh, also, mm-hmm. if, if you don't have that, if let, let's say... You know, I, I know a nine millimeter, but let's say for your uh, uh, six five Creedmoor, the the cheapest way to get a hundred rounds of a rifle brass or something like that is buy loaded ammunition, brand new ammunition. Shoot it, it boom, it's once fired, it's already to your chamber. All you have to do is neck it down. So, the best way to buy a lot of times rifle brass is buy a hundred or however many new pieces of brass mm. unless it's like two two three or something like that that everyone shoots or even a 308 go to the range pick that shit up but if it's i mean even 30 odd six sh- sh- no. buy new shoot it and you have once fired brass yeah i mean then at least you get to shoot it i mean if you do buy the brass brand new 50 or 100 cases it's going to be cheaper than buying 50 or 100 rounds if it's well, pretty much anything, but but with, the, the but, thing. but, but with powder, primer, and projectile added with that, probably not. So my thing is, if you've got a rare cartridge or unusual cartridge, and you wanna you wanna do some hand loads because um, you've already got you've invested in all the equipment, and and you're trying to save some money, uh, you might be better off, you know, getting getting some brass, especially if you're already ordering something. And I mean, like if you go into the is. is is it the Starline site where you got to buy it in bulk? But if you buy Starline brass off of Midway or Brownells, you can get a hundred at a time, something like that. So if you're already ordering some other stuff that's maybe not related to reloading from one of the big websites, maybe you just throw on some some components or just add some, you know, a bag of a hundred bullets or you a, a bag of a hundred pieces of brass. But I've bought new brass on rare occasion, but it's been for calibers that I don't normally pick up at the range. 
I, I have a hard time buying 223 or 9 millimeter brass brand new. That's just like, uh, 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 yeah, yeah. And some that, people have that's, ranges that's, that won't let them collect their brass, which is BS, but whatever. So, so, so also find reloading uh, groups on Facebook. I've yeah. had a lot of great experience fi- uh, getting um, reloaded. I'm not, not reloaded, but um, uh, bulk brass, like thousand pieces for you know three four cents around um of nine millimeter um you could get like let's say you don't want to deal with the whole brass prep you could buy stuff it's about six six to seven cents a piece of brass so it's getting a little bit pricier but it could be you know all you know wash size everything all you gotta do is put on your press put a primer in it and go um you could do that as well there's there's people and companies out there. Facebook is awesome for stuff like that. Um, you know, if you I look mean, at what the investment's going to be by the time you get your Tumblr or your media, and and I mean, it would almost be cheaper, maybe for somebody who's a casual reloader first getting into it, to just buy either new brass or buy prepped used brass, once fired brass. That all they got to do is essentially run if a you buy brass for the new... first loading. Yeah, 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 yeah. If you buy used brass or once fired, always inspect your cases because yeah. I almost made a mistake the other day. Hopefully I can get a good picture of this. Is there you go. Right oh there. yeah. So you can't see his little split there in the neck yeah. or what? So, so so when they say uh, once fired, yeah. All that means is that it was fired. It does not mean once. They cannot yeah. guarantee wow. that it's only been shot once. Like that piece of brass, I guarantee has been shot because more than if you look at the head stamp it had a crimp on it and i guess somebody filed it down Mm -hmm. so it was reloaded so yeah always inspect your brass that is super super important so that one's been shot at least twice yeah um Um, yeah i mean go ahead and what issues that I've been having is all the uh, I stopped buying once fired because now that I have a how a mini action uh, or that that rifle I absolutely love. It's a little bit it's a little attack driver even though it is a one in nine twist it won't stabilize the um, heavier anything heavier than seventy two grains. Uh, so um, what I've been using is uh, PMC bronze is. Mm-hmm. Hopefully yeah. I can get this to focus as well. Um, is It's nice casings, and they have... It's like a bevel. It's not actually... Um, what is it? Uh, crimped at the bottom, because all the once-fired stuff that I got has a crimp at the base, because they're all military stuff. Yeah. Uh, and I don't want to file that down, because I don't necessarily know how to file it down to get it right. Uh, um, they're swagers. I know. I saw the swagers, but they're like a hundred and ten bucks. That I'm just like, ah, uh, well, yeah, I can what, wait. What press do you, press do you have? Uh, it's a rock chucker, just okay. single stage. So there are there are ones that you could use with that. They're slow, but you could use them. Um, yeah, would it just be uh, disadvantage just to buy you know new brass so, or you know? What I ultimately you want to take the military is... crimp out of the primer pocket? That's what you want to do? Yeah. Just chamfer it by hand. Done. Okay. Uh, it's an option. I'll, it's an option. I'll, 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 yeah. I'll look into that because I hear people that are like, oh, yeah, don't don't chamfer it because it could blow out the primer. It could, you know. No, no, no. You, you can just cut that out. It's, it's no big deal. Hey, real quick, guys. Gunsnob just joined us. Let's let him get a quick intro in there and uh, contribute any part he wants to. So, Gunsnob, what's going on, man? Welcome to Caliber Corner. Yeah, How you doing, bro? Invite, man. All right, cool. Invite. So, you got any experience with reloading at all? Do you do any reloading? Uh, um, I used to. I uh-huh. sold all my reloading stuff just because I didn't have time to mess with it anymore. All right, all right. Hey, real quick, uh, if somebody wants to check out our channel, what can they expect to find over there? Um... A whole lot of nothing. No, there's oh. several videos. <laughs> yeah. A lot, of holster, a lot of holster making stuff that seems to be popular, so I just keep adding more of that. So. Oh, cool. All right. All right. 
That's all right, man. Well, hey, thanks for joining us. And again, we've got a lot more discussion yet. We're just uh, chatting about uh, how to find good deals on reloading components. I'm getting into reloading myself. I've got my press now. I've got a ton of what I need to get started. I'm just myself. I'm just looking for an appropriate bench to, to get started to bolt the press down and I can finally get going. So, um, so yeah. uh, an another way to get cheap stuff mm -hmm. is get friends that reload because let's say, you know, well, let's say, you know, I, I, I have a seven millimeter and I have some 2,700. I, I have several pounds of that. I don't use a lot of it. So I could be like, hey, you want to try this powder out? Yeah, you know, here, I'll bring my half-used jug over. Let's make up some loads and I'll take my half-used jug back. So you're, you, you know, you and I'll give it to you. You know, you'll, you'll have 8, 10, 12 rounds or however many you load okay that's free powder um same with primers and stuff teaching someone to load yeah you, you could toss them probably everything except projectiles because projectiles is you know expensive yeah so <laughs> that's that's actually what somebody is. i did something slightly dangerous uh some guy that i know uh who's big into reloading those big huge bore caliber like three three eight lapua the 50 bmg actually gave me a half used uh, one pound jug because he had bought um, a big huge jug of um, the 50 BMG powder. He gave that half of um, okay. uh, he actually so <laughs> sorry about that. Um, uh, he actually gave me a half one pound jug and uh, <laughs> I wanted to do some testing with it so I made a few rounds of 54R with 50 BMG powder I actually started with low amounts of powder. Um, and normally with 50 BMG is a very slow burning powder because obviously most of the rifles that it's used in has huge case capacity, has very long barrels and very heavy bullets. So you want a slow powder. So I know that the M44 is a very short barrel and comparatively in size to 50 BMG is... Uh, much smaller diameter, and plus, I've seen videos of people basically putting pistol powder into a uh, 54R case, scraping off the top, slapping a bullet on it, and the rifle is fine. So I know that the, um, you know, it, it's strong. not going to blow up uh, in my face. So I eventually did more and more testing with what I had, and I actually got my M44 to throw such a huge fireball that uh, I think I have photos somewhere in my uh, computer that I'll try to find. Um, but it threw such a huge fireball that it like lit up the surrounding area. <laughs> so, Just remember, guys, Caliber Corner is not responsible for any injuries you might acquire. I know. I did, I did mine safely. And, I did uh, mine safely. With gun powder so, so, the privacy of your own home. Carry so on. That, 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 that's something we need to talk about. Uh, Recreational that's nukes for AWAG. Yeah. <laughs> that's hey, man. We talk about. We're talking about how to get powders for cheap. Yeah. Do not have, do not buy an, an open pound of powder unless you intimately know that person and know how they reload. Because intimately. some people. Well, yeah. I, I mean, like. <laughs> like their family, their friend, there's some you know is not going to not be paying attention at some point, put something else in there. Right. Right. Like, yeah. well, let, let's say, you know, everyone's seen that meme like, Oh, I cleaned up your re reloading station uh, station by combining all your powders into one jug. Oh. No, th th I've heard of some reloaders. God. Go like, That's oh, dangerous. I, I accidentally missed, um, mixed my, this, my, this rifle powder with this pistol powder. What should I do? Burn it. Yeah, get put it outside. Put it in a fire pit and burn it. Yeah, don't don't do it. And, if you and no no person, offense, guys, but I know you, and and I've got I've got reloader friends that aren't aren't gun channels members or on YouTube or anything like that. I won't buy open powder from anybody. Not yeah. not even not not them or you guys. I just I, I err on the yep. side of caution. Mm -hmm. Now I will say this: if you go to a gun show and you see an old can of powder and it's an old metal can because they used to actually come in that mm -hmm. and it's sealed it's probably good to go but you don't know uh -huh. if somebody has taken a mallet and tried to pop that seal back on there because you can pop the the old steel off of them well, well, save yeah, it and, re and refill new, it just be safe and buy a new off the shelf yeah. either, either online or your local store i mean that's that's the way to do it yeah 
Definitely. Yep. 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 yep, yep. Cool. Well, uh, anything else on the topic of uh, buying reloading components and saving money? I. Uh, it. So there's reloading components, then there's like, like you like press, uh, die stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. You go shop around for the cheapest price, but then you got shipping on it on it top. Just find a site out there and buy it all at the same site. There's been you okay. guys, like, people watching this. Go back and check the check the chat because people are throwing out a lot of good deals. I think I don't know if it was Midway had some specials or Brownells. We mentioned that before. Um, there's some really good deals right now, especially on shipping, which can be kind of a make or break for a lot of the items that you buy. Especially if you just need one item, uh, maybe you don't have Amazon Prime or you know you usually pick stuff up locally. So, so, yeah. so check Craigslist to see if somebody's selling a used reload press. And if, if they are, they may have, you know, leftover bullets or things like that that are, yeah. are non-perishable that, that you might be able to just make a deal in and buy it all cash. A used press will work just fine. If it's missing something or something's screwed up, yeah. you can still get parts for them. Another so, thing is reload dies. Uh, they, they don't really wear out. You might, you might bust a pin or a collet or something like that. You can get parts off the manufacturer's website. And it's kind of interesting. Because I bought replacement parts on Lee's website for less than those same parts on Amazon. Mm -hmm. But the wow. Bulge Buster kit is cheaper on Amazon than on Lee's website. So sometimes you kind of go back and forth and shop yeah, around. Yeah, do, you know? do shop around. Don't just go off what you think is the lowest price. Definitely, because you can find some significant differences. So uh, look, yeah. look at estate sales. Um, mm -hmm. Whenever I was looking for a single stage press, I just was out driving and I saw an estate sale. Estate sale. I was like, all right, I'll swing in there. And like I'm like I'm not gonna be able to buy anything. I I have like maybe 30, 35 bucks on me. I just you know walk in, look around, and within two minutes, I, I saw a bunch of gun stuff. I'm like all right, and I'll just walk over there. You know maybe I'll pick up you know a pound of powder or some bullish or something. Mm -hmm. And there was a new in the box RCBS rock chucker ooh, for twenty five bucks. Oh my god. Ooh. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, those, yeah. Man, those like farm sales, estate sales, and uh, yeah. and auctions and stuff. Man, you got garage sales too. You never know. Um, I'll tell you right now, I haven't had good luck looking around on Craigslist. Maybe it's because of Nebraska's low population. I might find one or two presses in the entire state that are on Craigslist, but you know, if you guys, well, it's also in, against our terms of service for uh, ammunition and reloading. Seriously? Stuff. Yep. Oh, okay. Well, these people didn't care, so. <laughs> Uh, I, I thought it was I just. Mine, I thought it was just whole firearms, not parts or reload stuff. No, that's well. That's how it is. Last time I read it, so they may right. have changed. It's been a while it. since I've looked. So. Yeah, a, a lot of sites are including reloading as no go items. So, um, another thing that you should invest in is a bullet puller of some sort. Oh yeah. Because um, at my local range, we. They occasionally have people that bring in like ammunition that they don't have a gun for anymore and they just want to get rid of it. So they put it on this table and then there's a number there of the guys there. You can say, hey, I want to buy that ammo. My name and, is going to demonstrate this for us. There you go. That's uh, all you got to do. That's it. Because I, have yep. I haven't even used it yet. Squib, I got the one you gave me, man. I haven't had yeah, I got to you around. That, so. that, that one, one that would be RCBS or Cabela's. Those are both green. I think RCBS makes both of them. Nice. I like those because they're the only American-made kinetic bullet pullers out there that I'm aware of. Otherwise, they all work the same way. See, uh, I did, uh, kinetic I did a bullet video, pullers are... I did a video on kinetic bullet bullet pullers, but I uh, I don't think I published the one I've got on... You can also get a bullet puller that uh, works in a reload press. They actually have a pulling die. Yeah, that's, that's what I use. Yeah, I um, use both. So, uh, I like the collet type that uses your press to pull the bullet because... I had actually bought 200 rounds of 762 by 39 that was reloaded. So I don't know what's in in the ammunition. People are like, oh, just shoot it. I'm like, no. I mean, I, I, I like put like almost two grand into a rifle, and I don't want to have it blow up in my face. Uh, so, that's the guy. That's the guy who uses 50 BMG powder and uh. Oh yeah. Hey man, I did that safely, and I wanted I wanted to do. If it's I wanted to do that. He won't feel bad, but if it's accidental, he's gonna feel bad. Okay. Because yeah. Oh, okay. It's like he's like he's. And plus, it's a rifle. It. It's a rifle that I don't necessarily care about. Well, we care about your face, and so, you know that's so the most there's, important thing, anyway. I guess. And your arm. <laughs> and there's another, you know, same thing. I have a, a friend of mine that I know. He's like, oh yeah, my dad, my grandpa loaded or my dad or grandpa loaded these up seven uh, 
seven millimeter Mauser. I'm like, I'm pulling it. I'll reuse the bullet. I'll reuse the case. I'm pulling the bullet. Yeah, it does. Yeah, mean, and that's that's yeah. that's when what I end up doing. Picking up brass, you'll find unfired grounds. Now you can look right away and see if there is a uh, dimple in the primer, in which case, you know, it's it's a misfire, or whatever. It's no good. But you, with that bullet puller, you can take the bullet out, and then you can reuse the case if it's brass. Just dump the powder. You go. Well, how do I know what kind of bullet it is? Well, you can identify it by what it looks like. If it's jacketed hollow point, full metal jacket, whatever. You put it in your scale and you weigh it in. Oh my goodness, grains. And there you go. You you can you can take it apart with the bullet puller and and reuse it. So if there there are you know I mean I know that's like one here one there but still it's better than leaving live ammunition laying around. And if it's that steel case crap, definitely pull the bullet out of it and toss that steel and get some real brass. Yeah, there you go. So with the seven six two by thirty nine uh, ammo that I got, it was two hundred rounds for like twenty bucks. It's like insane. Uh, and what I actually wanted was the brass cases from it even though I still don't have a die set for it yet. Um, but the bullets on top, uh, I learned later that they're, um, they're like these insanely crazy looking hollow points that they have uh, for 308. I guess they're for like hog hunting. I think they're barns. They're solid copper and they're like TSX or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, so I found out that like only 50 of these uh, bullets are like, Forty dollars a box, and that's only for fifty. And I have two hundred, so uh, I, I think I did quite well. Um, so I'm gonna pull if, those. Uh, if you pull those, that? if you pull those with the kinetic puller, uh, I don't know how well you did because that's a lot of friggin' work. Yeah, uh, I I used a um, the collet type that goes into my rock chucker. That way, I just run them up and then I twist the thing down so it clamps onto the bullet and then pulls it so yeah, um, and, and I, I use it I just use kinetic and that's another thing is um, I had a friend give me a um, 762 by 54 r that was military surplus and he claimed that they were uh, incendiary bullets and I was like uh, <laughs> uh, I don't want to and he's like oh just use this to, to pull the bullet I was like no because <laughs> it was using the, the the impact kind, the um the kinetic puller. I was oh like, no, because if it's incendiary, God. that will go off and right. make fire everywhere. He's like, oh. And I was like, because there's like little firing pins in there. I couldn't hear it, so it kind of <laughs> made me think. So I pulled the bullet in the collet, and it's a very, very long bullet. And it's pretty heavy. It's uh, 187 well, grains. And I'm like, wait a minute. I mean... This is this is insane, and I did more research, and it just turns out that it's just heavy ball ammo. Um, but it had a yellow and silver tip, and he's like, "Yo, these are incendiary because it has the yellow tip." And I was like, "Oh boy, this guy's gonna get me arrested for a f like freaking illegal ammo." But uh, but they're they're just heavy. It's, it's heavy ball. You should be arrested for ignorance. Is what it should be. So, so, so it's not illegal, it's not illegal to own. It's not illegal to own. Some also is kinetic. Bullet, uh, bullet pullers, um, they don't work with five five six. Yes, because the five five six is a very Works thin. For me. I, well, I, it, I military five five six. Yeah, say. My, my, mine is it, well, mine is because it's I, I, I have I I actually loaded some and I, I was loading the last time I was loading five five six, which is like a year or two ago. I was loading and I and I didn't look at how much powder I had because I was so used to reloading pistol and i'm like oh my powder hopper i'll be able to load for two or three hours without looking at it um i forgot that a rifle takes a lot more than pistol and yep. i ended up i had a i was reloading i loaded about a thousand and i had to go through and i had to shake all of them and the ones that i didn't hear <clears throat> powder in them i pulled i had about 10 or 15 rounds that either one had a low charge and the other ones were empty, and I still cannot pull those damn bullets. I've hit it. I've broken a kinetic uh, puller <laughs> trying to do it, and it just it won't release. Kingpin says he used two wrenches. No, I'm just kidding, David. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Oof. Put uh, one in the put one in the vise grip, and the other one just yank on it with a with a you know a channel lock, right? <laughs> so Actually, what I oh. I wanted to do is it's I, I mean uh, I'll be honest. Uh, I'm more of the gray zone, almost dangerous area of the reloader. I'm a bad example sometimes. Uh, We've loaded. 
Yes. <laughs> um, but I pulled, um, what is it, the green tips? Because I wanted to make 223 green tips because 556 five, will not work in my How Mini action because 556 five, is a much higher pressure yeah. cartridge than 223 two, Remington. We'll get into that later unless you guys want to get into the differences no, between 223 two, and 556. Five, no, we've six. talked about it now. Uh, <laughs> it's all good, man. But, I mean, not that it's an interesting topic, but you do need to be careful. You know, you need to make sure the gun's rated for it. So, but, so um, if, if a gun, uh, 100,000 foot view, if a gun says 556, five, it could shoot 223 two, and 556. Five, if a gun says... 76251 do not put a 308 in it. That's it. Yes. That's all we got to touch. If it says so, 308 you can you can shoot 308 and and 76251 so. But, so uh th this uh intermission on Travis B11 is brought to you by was it Black Rain Coffee or something like that? Black Hole Coffee? No. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Black Rifle Coffee Company gets well, everything no, no. going real uh, fast. I believe today it's Blackout. Blackout, yes. Blackout yeah. Coffee. Blackout coffee. Black it's coffee. Black Something Coffee. Yes. FYI. He's and black. Nature. When you get <laughs> coffee yeah. hot and black, yeah. you gotta I mean, have Blackout. Steamy, hot, and black. Yep. He drinks it. Yep, absolutely. Yep. Anything steamy, hot, and black. I think he said brown <laughs> earlier. I, I think he did. Brown. Yeah, he did say brown. Yeah. That could yeah. be tea too, huh? Yeah. So uh, yeah. the <laughs> ultimate question for reloading is do you D-prime then tumble or tumble then D-prime? Yes. Mm -hmm. Same here, yes. So meaning Most so, so it, it, it depends. Um, if you if you if you D-prime then tumble Get a universal D primer that won't touch the case because you don't want to screw up your dies or scratch the living crap out of your brass or something like that because it's dirty. Um, I, with my rifle, I clean, D prime in size, and then I clean again uh, just because to get all the crap off of them because I use a different type of, or I, in the past, I've used a thicker type of uh, lube that. You don't want to run through uh, uh, your rifles and stuff. Um, but my pistol, I clean and then deprime and load. In it. So it, it depends on what your if you want supreme accuracy, deprime, clean, load. Oh, okay. So another yeah, thing I, is, my I, answer was yes as well. I just wasn't quick to the. Uh, mute button because my hands are covered in anti-seize. I haven't, I've tried it both ways and I haven't noticed a difference. I've heard some people say if you D-prime and then tumble it, and I'm talking about dry tumble, and I know you guys wet tumble, but I dry tumble, you'll end up with all this media in the, in the primer pocket. Never had an issue with it. And I've heard people say that if you, you leave the primer in so you don't get media in there, then you don't get the primer pocket clean. Once again, never had an issue with it. So, I think it's just personal preference. So, and, and, oh sorry, go ahead, my bad. Uh, I did have another question is, can you neck size in a semi-automatic? No. Because... What? Neck size. Just neck sizing instead of full, full length oh, resizing. Full length? Yeah. No. Because no. Why that, not? That action, no. That action... No. What, what happens, that action starts to open up before that brass has fully collapsed back down. I mean, it's fully expanded, but it hasn't fully collapsed uh, down so as you're starting to pull that round out, it'll still grow. So you huh. still need to bump the shoulder. But in a bolt action, that happens so quick that it goes back and fits to your chamber again. It's all about okay. the neck. So uh, that's that's essentially what I did with my helmet mini action. Is every time I use uh, two two three Remington, I just neck size it. And then uh, tumble it, and then reload yeah. it. If, cool. if you're if you if you shoot a, a piece of brass like you know my 303, it's notorious of neck spl uh, of K splitting at the heads because they're 303s. Um, yeah. Well, I, and, you know when they designed it, they didn't size. care about reloading back then. I right. mean, it's just like the set me's or whatever. You hear the same thing about FALs, what they do to 308 brass and stuff. They they yeah just destroy the yeah brass. yeah. Um, 
you know, if it's if that piece of brass is only going to go in one rifle, let's say you only have one bolt action, and all these are bolt action semi autos, full length size every time. But yeah, if it's a bolt action, and you know this piece of brass is going in this gun every time. Just neck size it. It's not. It'll feed just fine because it'll shrink back down to the the headspace of the rifle. All right, guys, let's go ahead and take this into the uh, the next topic here. And uh, again, I just want to talk about this because this is the newest thing. And I know you traditionalists is probably going to get you all fired up. Uh, there was a new type of ammunition that was featured at uh, SHOT Show. And I was pretty excited about it until I really looked into it. So I don't know how I feel about it. So I wanted to get your opinion on it. Uh, I'll just go ahead and do a little screen share with you. This is the uh, brand new from Winchester. The 350 IM Legend is what it's called. I'm sorry, 350 Legend, my bad. And I don't know if you guys know much about it, but I wanted to talk about it. There's currently five rifles or six rifles out right now that are chambered in it. And I, want, I mean, and I know that there are some some straight wall 357 cartridges that have already been manufactured. So basically the 350 Legend. You mean like 357 is, Magnum? <laughs> Or Max, yeah, like, but but you know, designed designed in a longer cartridge. So what it is, yeah, exactly. Uh, three fifty legend is basically it's it's the parent case is two twenty three. It's not neck down at all. I just want to give you the numbers on it because Winchester's really marketing this stuff. They claim it's got. I don't like how they do this. The way they do their comparisons. Uh, okay, more energy than thirty thirty Winchester three hundred blackout and two twenty three Remington. You can really argue that because of hand loads and and just so much variety out there. And those Wait calibers, yeah. Now, I just at two hundred yards. Watched, that's their claim, Tony. I, I watched yeah. a video on this stuff from I think Paul Harrell, and he says he don't know where they're getting their comparison information well, from because it's not accurate. So, yeah. So yeah. I more know. energy. So so the more energy than three hundred blackout and two two three. You're doing that because of case, because of case, um, of volume, because two two three. You're you're you have a shoulder. Yeah, Three hundred blackout. Yeah. You're trimming it way down in a thirty thirty. Dude, a thirty thirty started out as a black powder case. That is. Well, I mean, that you could argue that any round has more energy than some other round. I mean, yeah. Who's to say you're comparing apples to apricots? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So they're saying more energy, and they say it's view the specs. Well, they're showing you the specs at 200, and I was watching another video where a guy, really interesting channel I just subscribed to, it was like Blue 605 or something, some old guy sitting around talking about it, and uh, here they're showing the energy comparisons. You know, They're just throwing a 300 blackout, a 330, and a 223. They're saying 903 uh, foot-pounds of energy at 200 yards. But then this guy went onto the Winchester website and found 3030 or – you know, some load of 3030 that was basically comparable to that too. So again, yeah. it's kind of interesting because they're trying to market this on more energy, less recoil and increased penetration, but okay. Less recoil than a 450 Bushmaster. Well, you would think that's objective. <laughs> well, well, no, well, this is that, major. That, this is measured pound feet, but I'm just saying, sure. Well, it should have less recoil. If, if we understand physics, it's, you know, even on a basic level, right? Well, oh, yeah, that big. Yeah, it, it, yeah. It's, a, it, it's like shooting. It's like saying, oh, my, in, in comparison, my nine millimeter has less recoil than a 40. Uh, That's what uh, You know, measured, say, measured, got, measured, you know. And so. This, this massive 35 caliber round has got significantly less recoil than my tiny little 30 06. Now for the okay, I can understand the the gelatin penetration. You know, we're looking at eleven point seven inches and the twenty percent gel ballistics gel it's, it's versus two forty three and two twenty three. What's that? It's a heavier round, probably. Yeah, yeah. So it's mm -hmm. like it's like they're taking. I mean, they're right, just taking these, common this is knowledge. This not being and, shot in a handgun. This is shot in yes. a rifle. When you shoot three fifty seven yes. Magnum at a snub nose yes. revolver, you're getting snapped. You put it in a Henry lever action, you don't feel it. Right. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's it's really it's it's marketing hype. And, uh, and I, I I think this is what 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 this is really going to yeah. is the areas or the, the states that you have to hunt with a straight walled case, because there's really not many options in a small bore. And, and I want to give well, one credit for that. I want to give them credit. Well, for yeah, for that too. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, okay. You know, 44 Magnum, 357 Magnum, 450 Bushmaster. I mean, 70. Forty. Yeah, thank you. No, 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 no. Smith and Wesson. In, in a small one. So, so that's what they're advertising on too. 
Hell, I might just redo one of my pistol caliber carbines in 10 millimeter and use that just to spite everybody. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but but, but when, when I say small diameter, I'm talking about the the right around the three fives, you know, right around the 30 caliber here. And, and for those who don't know, nine millimeter is 0. 0.355, 0. 0.356. Yes. 38 special and 357 are 0.357. That's why uh, there's those convertible revolvers that'll shoot 38 or nine millimeter. Uh, so they're right around the same diameter size. Now the weight of the bullet and the kinds of bullets you can get and, and totally you know, yeah. then with the, the cartridge, how, how much, you know, power it's got behind it, that's a different story. I mean, it's good that they're marketing this for those states or somebody interested in that kind of a round. It's not, I'm not saying it's a bad thing that I want every company to make every kind of ammo they want to. I think it's a wonderful thing for the industry, but to start throwing it out there against other, especially if you're in one of those states where you can only have a straight walled cartridge, you wouldn't even think to compare it against 300 blackout or 223, you know? Or, a, I, for or hunting, 30, 30. So, yeah, it's like, it's like, well, so, but yeah, but I, and again, it's cool that they're marketing it and it is a very powerful round. I mean, I'll tell so you guys some of the figures this. here in a little bit, but yeah. So, so, so think about this. Any stats, you can pick and choose what you want to make whatever you want look good. The well, thing I, I've got the a same question. Thing people say that 9mm is more than 357. Yeah. The thing that you get with this is a hunting gun in an AR platform. That's the whole friggin' point. Well, I mean, and it's but it is it is available. And there's four or five bolt action rifles that Winchester has out right now. There are three plus one. Uh, so there are rifles. I mean, they're coming to market. They're be already showing up on the websites as, as coming soon, uh, if not already out there. So I mean, there are guns that are going to be out there. It did get the Sammy certification, and and Winchester even said they're going to allow anybody to make the round that wants to. Well, they'd be stupid not to. Um, so I mean, I understand that. So, so real quick, I just want to talk about the energy levels out of the barrel, 20 inch barrel, 150 grain, 1800 pounds, 180 grain, 1762 foot pounds um, or pound feet. Is it foot pounds or pound feet, right? 160 grain has 1759 foot pounds, uh, 145 grain FMJs, and they're going to make a range grade ammo that's going to be inexpensive. They said it'll be about the same price as 556. We'll see. That actually makes me pretty excited. Uh, 1,778, and then they've also got a super suppressed 265 grain running 1,060 feet per second that has 661 uh, foot-pounds of energy uh, out the barrel. So, you know, they claim it's got 120 more foot-pounds on average of energy than 3030. And, I mean, I, I you know, again, for somebody in a straight-walled state, that might be one of the best options out there for your hunts. You know, I don't know. Well, when they talk about well, when they talk about the the potential at like two hundred yards, like the, yeah. you brought up the graph earlier, yeah, is that is that it, is the two hundred yards like the optimal distance for that round to be at its full they, capacity? They said it was designed to be a two hundred and fifty yard deer round. That's exactly what the representative said to it. I'll so, go back into screen share, but yeah, go ahead. Man. What if your deer is twenty yards away and that's the rifle that you've got? Oh no no no, that's fine. They're saying it's going to have adequate. Energy at 250 yards to take down a deer. That's that's okay, what they're okay. saying. Oh no, you're more than adequate out the barrel. If anything zero to 200, you're going to be sitting good. You know. So um, here's here's the thing um, that I see in this is uh, I'm not I'm not a hunting person. Um, it's uh, hunting is the, the farthest thing from my mind when it comes to firearms and things like that. Is if you have a rifle that's specifically for hunting. Other than that, what use is it? Like, for real. Uh, ammo availability, yeah, sure, you can have a deer that, uh, you can have a deer gun that will take down a deer at 200 yards, yeah, and yeah. you have a box of ammo for it, and it costs like 50 bucks a box well, of 40. you know, some it's guys just are like, just into every caliber that comes out. Somebody just wants a 450 or wants a 458 or 50 Beowulf, just, just, just to have one. I mean, you know, there's you know, I, I think it's anybody that's into, but you're right. The, I mean, the intention is, you know, hunting and the marketing is going to be, you know, they said for states that have those restrictions, but, but you know, you're right. It's just like any of the new calibers that come out. Why would you want to get an AR and 450 or 458 or whatnot? I mean, it's, it's just because we have enthusiasts that enjoy that. CMMG yeah. is already making a, a 350 legend rifle right now, uh, AR pattern rifle that you can get, um, you know, whatever. I mean, people that are want to try out the newest, greatest thing want to buy. I mean, why do people buy? You know, new cars that go two hundred miles an hour, right? I mean, uh, having well, options is good. Having options yeah. is good, but there's already stuff on the market that'll do this. If you want to oh, get yes. it, get oh, it. Yes. That sort of thing. I can yeah. tell you, I have eaten my words before when there's been a new caliber come out, and I'm going, I'll never own that. 
and then something will happen, and I end up getting it, and I eat my word. So if I end up with one of these things, you guys uh, give me give me crap because I deserve it. But right oh, now my plan is not to get one of these. That. The only Wildcat cartridge that I'm genuinely interested in is uh, mostly for the PRS shoots that I uh, plan on going to later uh, this year when it gets nicer out, is 6mm Dasher. It's basically like 6mm Creedmoor, not 6.5, but mm -hmm. it's, it's a slightly shorter case, and it's a lot less recoil, and it's a lot flatter shooting than 6.5 mil, uh, Creedmoor. Yeah. So... Yeah, that's the only thing that piques my interest as those crazy wildcats. But even six millimeter dasher is, uh, you know, more common than this legend thing. But I know it's two completely different niches for what the cartridge is. But you know, one's right, for punching holes in tar in uh, paper, and the other one's punching holes in deers. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I have a question about this. Yeah. Is it going to be the three hundred blackout killer? Because it's supposed to be so much lower no. cost. That's their big seller. It's lower cost. It can be subsonic. The cost no, 300 Blackout is so versatile, this isn't going to touch it. Yep. Here's the thing also about uh, 300 Blackout. Yeah, sure, this 300 or 350, whatever this Legend cartridge is. Yeah, it'll be cheaper, but what about the availability? Like, you can go to your local shop and say, hey, I need 300 Blackout or 300 oh. Whisper. And they're like, yeah, sure, we got some. And you know, initially, I mean, yeah. with Winchester making it, you might get those normal distribution channels. You may find the range version at your local Walmart. You're going to find all four or five varieties at your Cabela's, your Bass Pro Shops, or whatever. Uh, you can always order it yourself online. I mean, it, those to those states that allow ammo deliveries. Um, and another thing, too, is with 300 Blackout. Now, I'm not necessarily a fan of it. Uh, I think it would be cool on, like, a, uh, a bolt action platform. But... Um, with 300 blackout is if you reload, you don't have any brass. Look for 223 Remington. There you go. You got 300 blackout brass. Yeah. Same there. Yeah, Just that's where. Make it all the way back out to 350. Yeah. Apparently. Uh, but, two, two, three. but I'm giving 17 bucks a box for my 300 blackout that I shoot. I mean, you can get some around. 12. Well, then you're obviously paying too much because you can get you can well, get it less than that. Are we talking critical defense bullets? Are we talking a VMAX? Are we talking? Yeah, I mean, are you, yeah, no, I'm about like regular full metal jackets. Yeah, if you just want your range, ten bucks a box. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, should, yeah, you should yeah, get it yeah. at your local store or just even online. I mean, you can get really good prices on it. But every every I area, every region is a little bit like different. 12, uh huh. But if I if the best place I can get it's Cabela's, and I'm you know three hours from my closest Cabela's. Oh so yeah, you're I just better off. Yeah, yeah, it's just yeah. it's just availability in your area. You're kind of screwed on that, but. I, I, mean, I would I think that they're going to charge more for this 350 there. If they're charging that much for 300 blackout there, then they're going to charge that much for the 350. Well, the problem is my gun's picky and it doesn't like Remington UMC. I can get Remington UMC at Academy any day for like 13, 14 bucks a box, but I just don't. It doesn't shoot it well. Yeah. You know, the main thing is for somebody who's just getting into guns, if you're new at it, don't be sold on the hype. Do some research because, again, like Squibb said, like we've heard before, there's a lot of good calibers out there that can already do the job. I mean, I would consider going with, you know, 450, what was it, 450 SOCOM, 450 Bushmaster. I might reverse on that. Bushmaster. I'd consider one of those two before because I could just get an upper, you know, and just slap it on the AR and be done with it. I mean, I would just rather go that route. I think, I think those calibers are getting a little more traction. The fact that multiple companies are offering firearms with them now, if I even wanted to try it. Um, maybe if say say maybe Connecticut Valley CVA makes a break action 350 legend, I'd consider buying one. But I don't know if I'm going to drop five six hundred dollars on one in bolt action, unless I'm in a restricted state, which case I'd consider it. You know. Um, but anyway, that was. You, I, wanted, the, yeah. I don't know why you could not put one of those together with just the friggin' barrel because they're two two threes. Their parent case, they should go in. True. True. Yeah, yeah you should be able to if you want assembly your own upper if. I don't even know if anybody's well, making a 350 Legend barrel right now commercially that you could pick up for CMMG. Probably does the, their own, you know. The only, the only thing I'm thinking with that yeah. is how long is the uh, Max OL will it fit into a magazine? Yeah, yeah. An AR-15 magazine. I'll bet it will. Uh, most likely it will, since that's the parent case. But you, you never know because it is a bigger. Bullet. That, I mean, that's one reason the 300 blackout had to be cut down is because if it kept it longer, it wouldn't fit in the case. Yeah. So yeah, the thing. I mean, it's, well, thing. sorry, it wouldn't fit in the magazine. Yeah, 
thing to take away with any kind of new one, new Wunder cartridge is, you know, wait a year or two. Any, who here remembers the 327 Federal Magnum? Or, 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 even, or, or even the Valkyrie, and that's still having... Yep. Yeah. Or, yep. Or, that's been on there for, what, three years? Or Night Strike's apparent favorite new cartridge, the uh, 6.8 SPC. They've had what? <laughs> two or th- they've had two or three revisions of it now. Even the 6.5 Grendel, yep. they've been kind of tweaking and revising it to, okay, we've gotten it out on the market, but we found out, well, if we trim this back maybe ten thousandths of an inch and do this and this, enough to where it's a slightly new spec. Yeah, yeah. Forty-five gap, anybody? <laughs> well, that, <laughs> there's a that was just a failure. 25, 45 sharp. I'm waiting for high points to make the 45 gap carbine. Oh, got one better for you. Six oh. millimeter, two, two, three. Yeah, there, there's there's a bunch of them. Mm-hmm. I mean, th- 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 there are more dilapidated loadings and cartridges out there than names in the world. Let Let's put it this way. If there's probably been at any point in time someone's taken a 30 out 6 case and either shortened it, lengthened it, chopped it down, necked it down, necked it up for any purpose. Now, every once in a great while... 25 out 6. Hey, 25 out 6 or 270, every once in a great while, those Wildcat cartridges really take off. And for... By the way, if anybody needs brass for either of those, email me at squib1911 at gmail.com and I'll send it to you. (laughs) <laughs> and you got for, tons of um, range pickups of that shit. Yeah. For um sorry. Yeah, that's okay. For those um who don't know what a wild wildcat cartridge is. Yeah. All right, there's in the US there's the there's a Sammy spec and I forget what that it's shooting associate well, whatever. It's basically an organization that agrees that okay, a 4570 it's this pressure you can have this maximum pressure this is the dimensions for it, and so on and so forth. Wildcats is basically taking any piece of brass or anything and either necking it down, necking it up, and creating something weird like necking a thir- 357 down to 30 caliber or stuff like that. Now, right. thing, things like... blackouts. Yep, 300 blackouts. It's basically anything that's outside of like a regular specification. Uh, I'll just take the memeiest one I can think of. I think if you search, look online, you can see that someone's taken a where the hell my 50 BMG go? A 50 <laughs> BMG down and necked it down to 17 caliber. That's a wildcat. Yep. Every once in a well, great while, they will 17 incinerator. So 20, yep. 22250 was a wildcat for about mm-hmm. 35 years. Mm-hmm. 454 Casul was a wildcat for God. 20 so, to 30 years. So so the, the parent case of a 308 is a 30 odd six. So what happened there is it was a wildcat for a very short time and then it was adopted to 308 and that became a parent case for other things. So that's when you start hearing, oh, the 30 three, uh, odd six is either a parent or a grandparent of so many different cases. That's what it's meaning. The parent mm-hmm. of a 308 is a 30 odd six. The uh, grandparent of a 22250 is a 30 odd six. Oh no. Nope. The 22250 come out before the 308. Okay. Yeah, wasn't it the um but but it wasn't same my spe- same spec. Okay. Yeah. But I mean but but that's how that's how we get to parent and grandparent cases. This is my yeah. favorite one, the 17 HSMI. This was that one that Midnight Range was working on. <laughs> it's that 50 BMG round that's got a 17 on the tip and it goes like 15,000 feet per second. Like it, it actually causes the world to stop spinning so quickly every time it's fired because of the the counter motion of it. So, seventeen HSMI. That's going to be the so, new one in twenty nineteen. All the hipster kids are going to they're going to start putting that in their FN five sevens. The, the, the amount of the pressure. The barrel pressure. Barrel <laughs> it was like 650,000 psi or something. I don't know. It's, I don't remember it. The amount of psi <laughs> that thing has. That's... Check out my video on the seventeen HSMI. You will be very impressed. You ought to see what it does to deer, man. It's like prepackaged before it hits the ground. <laughs> so it's pretty sweet. It is now, awesome. It'll now, just so it'll just blow up the side of a building. It's the new Navy SEAL so, round. So. so a bad thing about all these wildcats is yeah, you're making your own brass. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So if you are new to reloading, don't do it. If yeah. you are, if you've been reloading for ten or so years, 
I'd still say don't do it. <laughs> I mean, Somebody else has already thought of it. I can promise you yes, that. Yeah. As well, a matter of fact, there's a book called Cartridges of the World. Yep. It's about that thick. <laughs> if it's if you thought of it, it's already been, as long as reloadable self-contained metallic cartridges have been around, it's been somebody has stuffed bullet A into cartridge B with powder charge C because Oh, I wonder, can I get a six millimeter to well, go 6,000 feet per second? No, no, yeah. it, it's been doing that, <laughs> d- doing before that. Think about this. Oh, you know, we're going to have, you know, back in Civil War days, oh, we're going to have this buckshot with a double canister. Well, mm-hmm. that's uh, anything outside of what that barrel is supposed to shoot is a wildcat. I mean, duplex it's, cartridges. Yeah, it's fucking ball. All that stuff. I mean, hell yeah. I mean, you, you put, you know, let's say in, in your uh, black powder, it's only rated for 150 grains of Pyrodex or whatever. And you put a 200, that's a wildcat. It's dangerous. So, now, here's dangerous. like the opposite of uh, sort of a wildcat uh, situation that I'm in is I have, um, uh, what is it, the Bulgarian SLR 10. 10- 104s, 101s, uh, whatever that is. Uh, um, the uh, it's basically an AK-74. Um, the 545 by 39 does not come in brass, but RCBS does make brass dies for it. And for those of you who don't know, the 545 by 39 is not a 22 caliber. It is a 21 caliber, and in some cases, it's a 20 caliber. Uh, that's other issues and things going on with the AK-74M, but um, basically is in order to get uh, 545 brass, you have to get a 223 Remington case, then resize it to 222 Remington, then you can resize it to 545 by 39. Because if you go for, straight from uh, 223 to 545, <laughs> it will make your car, your cases do weird things. Yep. Yeah. Crazy stuff. Crazy so, stuff. All so, right, man. So, you know, but back whenever the whole, I know I'm jumping topics, but the 7 no, it's all good. 6, they're like, oh, the armor piercing, all this stuff, it can't be imported because it's in a pistol. There is a stipulation in that law saying if it's under 22 caliber, it's for 22 caliber and above. So technically, the seven and six stuff is a twenty-one caliber, so it falls outside those regulations. Man, we're going yes, because see, the look, board diameter reloading. Look what happens. When we talk reloading. The board <laughs> yeah. diameter of an AK seventy-four is twenty-one caliber. Yep, yep, yep. It is point two one eight. Yep, it's less that is the bore three. diameter. So the bullet has to be slightly smaller than that. So. Or in some cases larger if you want to get uh, velocity. So, mm-hmm. yeah, that's why. And a five five six is a true twenty two caliber. That's why a five five six and five four five. If five four five was a true twenty two, it would be a five five six. Yes. Right, man. And also five four five by thirty nine is oh, actually God. not five four five by thirty nine. It's five four five by thirty nine point five. Oh, that's very important to know. I can't wait for the uh, the 405 Travi AAC Smackdown Magnum to come to the market. I'm excited about oh that. Oh my gosh, so, I'm totally going to do that for you. So, it, was, um, it was originally used by the Inuit Eskimo to harvest whales, and uh, I decided to neck it down. So, yeah, so, uh, uh, It's, it's going to be a 338 Lapua Magnum case necked <laughs> up to 45. The, the 218 BAY 1000. We should, oh man, this is, this is too much fun. Just generating names for wildcat rounds. I'm having too much fun. It's, it's going to be called the Travi, uh, the, the 45 Travi Smackdown. The, the <laughs> Thunder the Thunder King, Tra- No, the King Travi Special. It's going to be a collaborative effort with yes. Uh, Bruce. Yes, a four four fifty nine do... Thundercat. There you go. It's one yeah. bigger than four fifty eight. So <laughs> I want to do the forty five five hundred, and that's take a forty five seven case and make it about six inches long. Hey, we'll see you at your funeral, <laughs> Tony. Okay. <Yeah. laughs> so, now the newest one is twenty five. Hey, is twenty two two fifty fifty. Leave that press to me. I'll come unscrew it when we come visit for, yeah, for the well, wake. Okay. Yeah. Which one? <laughs> so, well, Both. We're, we're, we're all seven of them. <laughs> we're, we're joking about this, but yeah. there is one round. That yes. is very seven five Swiss. 
So it's the GP11 loading for, you know, in starting right around 1911. If you have yeah. one of these Swiss ones, you could chamber a, GB, a Swiss like 1890 or whatever, like that, the straight poles. You could chamber this the GP11, but it will blow your gun up. Does it put holes in cheese? That's all I care about. It will. Good, good. Uh, all right, one thing your face I, cheese. I would <laughs> like to clarify something too. <laughs> and that's that our. 30 out six case that we say is the parent of everything is actually the child of the seven millimeter Mauser or the eight millimeter, whichever uh, one of those two came first. Se seven came first. The, um, the 30 out six is a longer case than a seven millimeter, but it's still based on that one. Based. Yes. Based. Yes. All right, guys, let's go ahead and move over to our last topic here. This is kind of a serious one. This is one that actually popped up in a viewer request for the 10,000 viewer subscription video that I did where you had to put down some, some topics. I kind of missed this one, and it's been posted for like three months now. 3D printed firearms. Do you guys think that there will be an effort maybe behind closed doors or some kind of dirty deals going on where the, the firearms industry may push for legislation? to prevent us from further developing and building our own 3d firearms what so, do you guys think about that yes and no do it okay. uh, just just so, so go out and buy an 80 percenter just do it so so a a friend of mine he is doing some dealings to come out with a a type of gun i'm not i'm not going to say what it is because it's still in oh, yeah. a sorry right. sorry right. yeah um like Right now, GE, with all of their turbofan engines, are getting away from milling. Everything they're doing is metal printing now. So yes. the technology for metal printing is there to hold the pressures. This guy and his and the, what they're trying to do is they're trying to build a firearm, and everything's proven. All the technology is proven. It just hasn't been produced yet. And it's going to be a fully printed firearm. So what's going to end up happening is they're going. What my assumption is, you're going to have to have a manufacturer's license to be able to do this. Is but do you? You can already legally manufacture your own firearm, right? Yes. But okay. what, what's going to happen because it's a new technology, and you know, just like oh, you can't three D print your firearms that that whole law thing what that's true for consumers if you are you well can, you could 3d print like let's say you're um an ar company or a glock company or whatever you could print your own i mean you, they could print them yeah if you're you're a person that has enough money to buy one of these machines by all means you can make your own the printing technology is there today. But the machines so, yeah, are like $100,000. No, could, the could we see the, several, those kind of uh, machines like G are using are several million dollars. It's, oh, geez. Well, yeah. you got to yeah, think. That, that's, yeah, exactly. Yes. The, all right. First, that we let's look at it from the purely technological standpoint of these machinery and then like the information, like the STL files and that for, oh, hey, I made this design. You know, once something like that's out on the internet, there, it's there. It's, it's, out there. Regardless yeah, of, it's hard to get rid of. Yes. Mm -mm. And um, yeah, it's not hard. It's impossible. Yeah, it's impossible. impossible to get rid of and okay, let's say the government decides that, oh, any 3D printer has to have this little chip in it that if it recognizes this kind of file, it's just not going to print it. Um, I'm going to come from, coming from a gamer standpoint. <laughs> That's impossible too. <laughs> yeah. Um, shit. Sorry, stuff. I might. New games in that come out cracked and broken. You know, this new one, like the Blu-ray when it first came out, it was supposed to be super secure and unrippable. It took 30 days, and oh, here's the hex code for breaking the the encryption yeah, on there's, it. There's there is no way that I honestly don't think there's any any way at all that you can stop any kind of a a chip or 
or programming block on something that you don't mm -hmm. want broken. Put it, put it this way. More, more encryption in it that, that even the most powerful computer cannot crack or so, it's got to so put, put it this way. Hackers are always 10 steps ahead of the programmers. Yeah. So yes. I am a computer programmer by trade. That's what I do every day. Um, as soon as something comes out within hours, it's cracked. Hackers, and it's a beautiful thing. I well, love it, it. It yes and no. It is a like it's the, me, it's a double edged sword. Abs absolutely. It absolutely. Um it's freedom of information. It is like for me, I I, I will never hack because that's someone else's hard work, time, thought into it because that's what I do. But everyone doesn't have my thought, my thought process. P there's evil in this world. You cannot stop evil unless you stop the individual. The only way you stop the individual is if we have a to totalitarian, totalitarian state. Totalitarian. Totalitarian. Thank, you. Thank you. Totally in. Uh, Total raisin brand. <laughs> I, I, I have not been drinking. 1984. Folgers. Um, but so you get into that space. The only way you can stop that is if you have an armed guard supplied by the state that does every bidding the state does, following you around even into the shitter. And that's well, I mean, I'm not. married. Does that happen. count? No, I'm just Pretty kidding. <laughs> they they um, follow you into the shitter. You know, it will be interesting though in the next ten years. You know, because we're already starting to see the technology come out there, and you know, I haven't heard much about three D printing in the news lately. I mean, there's a big deal about it when a few of those guns were showing off, and the the completely printed gun that fired one shot of twenty two LR or whatnot. Um, but with yeah. the um, you the know, yeah. if it blows up. Yeah. What's if that? you try to shoot it more than once. Uh, no, I'm talking about the metal printers. Once metal printing starts to take off, and now, because I mean, 3D printers are now you could buy one for what, two hundred dollars, three hundred dollars. I mean, they're going to be no, yeah, not a metal, metal one. No, no. But I'm no. saying that I look at but what they are. were five years ago when they were thirteen, fifteen hundred dollars, and now you can go buy one at Walmart. You can order one off eBay. Whatever. You can you, know? you can make your own CNC machine. It's no, you yeah. can make that for under a thousand bucks. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I've uh, what website was it? Hackaday or whatever. People taking. Like the Shopbot CNCs or the what are uh, plasma cams, replacing the plasma bit with basically a uh, wire feed welder, and then a little milling attachment. Because the thing with all right, laying down layers of plastic is one thing. It's a relatively low temperature, easily controllable process. Now laying down metal and getting that to actually fuse properly—that's difficult. Serious. Seriously, wow. you know I can see what you just typed there, Travis. On the uh, oh. the uh, metal printing, what is the tempering process to that? It's essentially an adhesive. I, I yeah, I, I don't know, but I don't I, know about the modern mean, machines that GE uses, though. Yeah, right. yeah. because I mean, G, you have to think GE to get that tempering and stuff inside turbine engines that are flying you know billions of miles like right now they're most of the turbines up in the air right now built by ge has been are, are these metal printed ones so yeah. they they have it down um yeah. what technology that's i have no clue but it's, yeah, it's it'll start there. to trickle its way down yeah. into the consumer industry because i'll you know that'll be the metal printing will be the next step in the evolution of it all. I mean, I can already see it heading that way. Hobbies yeah. will start doing I it. I can't wait really until I have a metal, a metal printer that's the size of a coffee maker in not, my not, basement. Not the wagon rifle works. So, it just prints out my, my AK for me. So, <laughs> yeah, but uh, you just tear it off and throw the mail. <laughs> in a couple of years, instead of costing $10 million, it'll cost a million. Everybody's going to have one. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the supply by the government because we'll be socialist by then. Yeah. I don't know the only way they could really stop that would be if they um, were to regulate, you know, those kind of printers, kind of like the FDA al already does with lasers. That's what, or make, make that it easy to produce the wattage limits on yeah, or the wattage can, limits. It's yeah. not like oh, this can. Um, it's not like oh, this could be used as a weapon. Therefore, it's regulated under say the BATF or whatever it's oh no this this pre pre presents a potential health concern therefore we're going to use the FDA to regulate it mm. 
So here's here's the thing: is the government basically dropped the ball on this one because essentially, when, when you run a CNC machine, a three D printer, or anything as the such, is you have coordinates. Coordinates are code. Code is a language, and language is protected by the First Amendment. So they can't regulate that. No, I think about this a minute. Yeah, wait till you hear the term "computer hate speech" come out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, no doubt, man. <laughs> think about this. Oh. Just look at how much they're freaking out about the possibility of plastic 3D printed firearms components. Yeah, I mean, you swear that the world's freaking coming to an end because you can 3 3D print a plastic gun that I would not ever consider firing. I mean, you can 3D print a lower receiver for an AR, and hell, you can even use plastic that makes it smell like coffee, you know? But, you know, it's still one of those things that it's, it's the technology isn't there to make it rigid enough. Yeah. The, there's some appeal factor to that smelling like coffee thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Scratch and sniff ARs. Oh, wow. that's a good idea. <laughs> Just scratch and sniff ARs. Hey, hey, oh every, every, every time you pull the charging handle back, it scrapes a little bit of that plastic off. It no, no, it smells no, like no. bacon and fire clean. <laughs> no, that'd be no, awesome. No, no. no. Okay. We need, we need that, scented gunpowders. That'd be awesome. So when you get in fire, it smells like, smells like waffles and pancakes. Yeah. That's where Syrup. I was yeah. <laughs> Instead of the case stuffing with cornmeal, man, I'm going to try it with coffee next time. Yeah. Oh, I know a guy who did a, a paper patching black powder, and he used to use just uh, lard for uh, lubing. And he said every time he shot, it smelled like bacon. <laughs> oh, I've done it with absolute bacon grease. Ooh. There you go. There you go. Yeah. No, but they have all kinds of, it's going to make you hungry at the range, though. That's the problem. So They have all yeah. kinds of plastics for uh, 3D printers, like ones that smell like beer. There's ones that smell like coffee. There's even uh, a 3D add-on that, uh, or the 3D printer add-on that can make you 3D print with chocolate. You know? Oh yeah, that was no um, like cup powder. This is true. This is true. Oh the, man, the bacon so. grease black powder did not work out because black powder has such a strong sulfur smell that it smelled like you was just going to hell. <laughs> well, you no, know, it smelled like the uh, the. Uh, Kind of a balanced breakfast. You have the wonderful smell of bacon. You crack open an egg, and oh, it's rotten. <laughs> has, has, I'm sure there's been a YouTube video on this, and I probably missed it. But can I wrap bacon around my barrel and fire enough rounds for me AR to cook it? Yeah. Oh, I have seen that, a video mm -hmm. where. Somebody All right, gentlemen, that. I must go. Uh, <laughs> hey, I'm like, going to go buy some raw gun. materials to uh, work gun. on a project that I'm working on. Gun food and combined yeah, chat. Well, you know, yeah. <laughs> later, a wag. I might later. go in probably 15, 20 because I gotta. Oh, Get it's fine. To... We're gonna we're gonna wrap it up here in a few. I just gonna ask you guys a question. Just let everybody know. Um, I am coming up on fifteen thousand subscribers, and the giveaway for that is going to be a GunTube exclusive. So I will put a video over on YouTube that'll take you guys over to GunTube. I want to get this out before I forget. I'll make a video for it this weekend, and all I'm gonna ask you to do is to comment on the topic on the GunTube side. I'm not asking you to subscribe or anything like that. It'd be cool if you did, um, but do comment if you can, and uh, uh. Just go ahead and leave a comment, and you'll be put in the drawing, and we'll do that probably next week during Caliber Corner, just to let you guys know. I've got a box full of stuff I'm going to send you. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> this is going to be a box full of random gun stuff is what it is. Some of it's things I've tested. Some of it's not. Uh, some of it's going to be just a little bit of everything. Throw some coffee in there, you know. Send that shit out. You want me to give you my address? No, no, no. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta enter the drawing, Tony. You gotta, enter the, you gotta, you gotta play to win, buddy. You gotta play to win. I like you so. a lot better, Squib. Oh man, jeez. Oh. All right. So, so uh, do you want a another Makarov? No, put you, it in there. You denied me the first one. You gave me this <laughs> no, one. No, no. You, you, I, I, oh, I, oh, I, oh, to I donate. Have, you know, if you want to pop one of those, dude, dude. If you drop in the mail, I will. I've got and I've got some 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 gun channel stickers that'll go out and some other stuff. But if you want to pop in the mail, I'll be happy to throw it that, in there. I've the got. One? It's okay. going to be just a random box of stuff so, for the. It's going to be my own tack pack. All right, it's going to be. It's, but it's going to be real cool stuff that you could use. So. Yeah, I'm gonna have my own tag. It's gonna be a travi pack, is what we're so, gonna call so, it. So, so yeah, travi pack. So, so it, it's it's that one, but it was the first first one that's messed up a little bit. 
Yeah, I, I, I'm going to teach your address. <laughs> FactorySecondsPack.com. Uh, no, I'm going to throw a scope in there. I'm going to throw coffee. I'm going to throw all kinds of some stickers and fun stuff. It's going to have a little bit of everything. And I do have a special present that uh, SS Pond is donating for it also, which is cool. So I'm going to I'm going to put all that in the box. It's going to be an ammo box, and then the other stuff's going to be bubble wrapped in the big in a big box. So it's all going to come together uh, to your door. So, yeah. So that's something coming up. So we'll, whether we're at 15 or not, we'll just go and do the drawing next week. I mean, obviously, we should we should be there. But uh, it'll be, like I said, you'll have to go to GunTube. You'll have to comment on that video, and that's where I'm going to pull the comment. Hopefully, I can. I'll have to check and see if a GunTube video is playable uh, through those comment pickers. If not, I'll just have to do the box with the names and and go from there. So David Bowling's a pro with that, man. I'm going to go back and watch your drawing videos and copy his format because he's got it down pat. So. Yeah. Before the secret, we get the out, secret of is obnoxiously shaking the ammo can. Obnoxiously, I'm gonna get an orange box and obnoxiously <laughs> shake it. So yeah. <laughs> oh we man. Of, we need to go back and revisit a little bit on reloading about primers. Ah uh, yes, yeah. We didn't really cover those a whole lot. Yeah. Uh, the priming aspect. Go ahead, Tony. Well, I just run across the video where I seen somebody say that. Big primers are for rifles and small primers are for pistols. Nope. And that is absolutely in prig insane. Okay. Or at least incorrect. Uh, buy your primers for what the box says they're supposed to be for. And use them for what the data you have says to use. So, difference between... So, small pistol, small pistol magnum... And lar and small rifle. The small rifle is a hotter component with a harder shell. The Magnum and the small pistol um, primers. The only difference in those is a hotter um, flash. Now, uh, personally, I'm thankful that Winchester started dropping primers that can be used either or. Uh, it's just. Oh, they, 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 they just makes it simpler, but uh, large pistol <laughs> rifle primers can be slightly longer than pistol primers. Yeah, so they may not fully seat, and then you have an opportunity for problems. Uh, real quick, something to throw out there: when I finally get this reloading bench all set up, we'll do a live stream over on GunTube, and and I'll have the pros take me through loading my first rounds. <laughs> And so we're going to, we'll do that as a little live stream. It'll be kind of fun. You guys can check it out. So if you're getting into reloading for the first time, you can see what I did and check out. I mean, I love Johnny's reloading bench, man, that channel. Uh, he's got really cool multi-part series on how to get used to using the Lee breach lock challenger kit. So if you're somebody who's new into reloading, I want to promote his channel. I don't know if he's part of gun channels or not, but man, his little, his little series is just awesome on, on, and it's not intimidating for beginner. Everything's explained in simple terms. It's not very complicated. Reloading can be dangerous, yes, but he does a great job explaining how everything works, and I like that. I do appreciate those videos. There's also a dude on there on YouTube uh, that goes by Gun Blue mm -hmm. something. That was the guy I was talking about. That was that was dispelling the myths of the 350 legends, like Gun Blue 605. Just type in 350 legend. He's got one of the most viewed videos on on the round. Gun Blue 490. 490. Man, no, I could listen to that guy talk all day. He's awesome. Check him out. Um, He's got. I don't. I haven't watched his reloading videos. I just found him looking up 350 Legend. But Listen of course, I don't have a time. What's Listen that? To talk all day is about two videos. No, he's got a ton of videos, dude. He's got a. He's got a pretty good know, uh, I, library. He, he's he's a talker. Yeah. No, I mean I enjoyed listening to him because I mean he covers the topics in, in a lot of depth. And so I appreciate exactly. that. I guess, That's what yeah. I said. Listening to him all day is about two videos. Oh, oh no, I didn't understand what you're saying. I was like, he's got tons of videos out there, but yeah. Cool. I like to do it. I mean, I've watched yeah. a crap load of his videos. As a matter of fact, the one I posted initially about the lube was from him. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's some really good channels out there. If you guys hunt around, there's some good, good information out there too. So, uh, but that's definitely one I think you guys can go to. Johnny's Reloading Bench and then Gun Blue. What we say? Four ninety. Four ninety. Check him out too. Subscribe to him. Um, otherwise, I think to be that's the straightest shooter I've ran across. Yeah, yeah, he's a pretty he's a no nonsense guy. That I mean, the fact that he put that video out dispelling the 350 legend when all these shot show videos are coming out praising it to the high heavens, I respect that because he did his research and pointed out the fact that maybe it's not as spectacular of a round as everybody thinks it is. You know, I, I think sometimes you need a reality check when it comes to these new products coming out because we buy into them, 
five years I down the road, you're stuck with a cartridge that you can't even find ammo for, you know? I still say that that thing is part of the whole trying to make the AR platform a hunting platform, too. Well, you know, and there's and there's plenty of other. I mean, there's plenty of other calibers out there that that do that for the AR. You know, your six fives and six eights and whatnot, your four fifties, and I mean, yeah, well, just kind of be appealing to that AR guy. I'll go buy an upper and buy into this caliber next. You know, I can see a lot of people uh, doing that because they've already got the lower, right? It's not a hunting. It, it is it is a hunting platform. You can do a lot of different things with it. I don't deny that, but it's not really. A big game hunting platform. So, so nothing but, is new. If if you think yeah. if you really think back with firearms industry, except optics and stuff like that, anything mechanical in a gun right now, nothing is new. Yeah, pretty much every trying to every pistol that's come out for the last hundreds or all, that's most pistols nowadays. It's basically a variation on the locking. Tilting locking breech design, regardless of how new or uh, just cool it is. Just think about it a second, though. How many times have you heard politicians say that ARs are not for hunting? This dispels that. That's a good thing. Mm -hmm. And yeah, but but I would argue that point with them the way they were originally as well. I understand what you're trying to say. You're trying to to air quotes, legitimize it in the FUD's mind and the FUD, you know, pulling the, the marionette strings on the, uh, on the politicians, I guess. But in 5.56 five, five, NATO, it was legitimate. The fact that we've got these stupid cartridge laws out here and in other places is the only reason why chambering it and other stuff for the purposes of hunting, it, it's just to work within the laws that, that your area may have for, for hunting. I mean, otherwise, you know, the, the two original calibers it was in, uh, you know, they did the job. I mean, I'm not a big fan of the AR-10, but it's out there and, it, and people like it. And the fact that you can, you can put other things in there and, you know, you can make it smaller with a pistol caliber for, for you know, better security or, you know, close in defense. I mean, the list just goes on and on and on. Yeah. But, but you know, I, I, I'm kind of concerned that, legitimizing it for hunting once again air quotes says that the second amendment is about hunting and it is absolutely not about hunting at all it's not about legitimizing it for hunting it's about delegitimizing is that a word more or less yeah they're illegitimizing that, illegitimizing, uh, yeah. illegitimizing yeah. thank you very much their claim that that's an issue well, it's just like the gal coming about the ammo tax. I can't remember what that was. on. Uh, we talked about it on uh, uh, Hit or Miss Tuesday nights on a clock. I said, you know, don't tell me how much ammo I can buy because me having ammo, again, it's not about saying I've got too much or not enough. It's about me having what I need to defend myself against a tyrannical government. So don't limit what I can buy. Don't don't tax what I need. You See, know, that kind of argument, it goes along with the guns, in my opinion. Getting into and the and reload, and you don't have to worry about how exactly. much Exactly. Well, that's... Buy. That's part of why I'm getting into it too. Looking at the way things are going, if we don't get up our butts and do something, then I mean, I'm yeah, and and I understand they can regulate power powders and bullets and all that crap too, you know. And there was a scare on all that stuff shortly after Sandy Hook because all that reloading stuff got snagged up. So that's one of the reasons why I want to get into it is in case it gets to a point that I need to cast my own and roll my own, which I'll hopefully be doing, you know, soon. I can do that. So. Yeah, it's just something to take into consideration. So, and it's not, you know, don't be intimidated by reloading. It's not, it's not impossible. There's a small investment into it, and once you get into it, it's definitely uh, something to think about doing. I'm mainly going to be doing it because it's cheaper for me to reload my own six five Creed more than it is for me to go buy it in the store. Uh, another, I can basically, yeah. Another point that I'll make: if you want to stock up on reloading supplies, yeah. Uh, as far as like gunpowders go, there's several that are so widely versatile. We mentioned Tide Group. Uh, Winchester 231 is another one. Uh, Universal. Mm -hmm. uh, Red Dot, I think. But I've not ever used it, so I'm not sure. Yeah, Alliance yeah. Uh, Unique is very... You can load that in pretty much anything. So you could stock up, you know, and have yourself 16 pounds of that shit around, which would be a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a lot more than that here, but uh, you know, it, it's going to work in about everything. It may not be the optimum, but it will work. But it'll work, and that's yeah. what's you know that's what's important. Yeah. 
And yeah. just, to, just to throw out for some of our metric friends or that grain, it mm. takes 7,000 grains to equal one pound of powder. Yep. And for, I'm not going to say which powder, but some of the 45 auto that I load, seven grains even of powder, 1,000 thousand rounds of 185, 230 grain uh, ball ammo out of one pound of powder. Like, Nine millimeter gets you about fifteen hundred. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I, I, I use four point two grains for my one hundred and twenty five grain for the sports shooter ammunition. I get sixteen hundred rounds out of a pound. Yeah, yeah I use four seven five for mine, but I'm not using the same powder either. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I mean, there are some there are some guys out there shooting like you could get into some really fast ones. And I, I've known some people that are in the low three grains mm -hmm. and shooting just fine. I believe that's uh, where 231's at. And what the hell is it, red dot? Uh, two, two, th are. 231's, you're, you're, excuse me, I've loaded some of that uh, for nine millimeter. You're still up in the four, four grain area. But th there's some yeah. master powders that you're into the the low to mid threes and then you know an eight pound jug you're like is there a, is there a fairy putting more in this mm -hmm. it just doesn't run out yeah uh, yeah i'm looking at a can of hp 38 right now and their uh listed charge for 38 special is three seven but that says to reduce by 15 to start yep i don't know my favorite pistol powder is 296 and it's uh 28.5 grain load in 44 magnum so it's a whole yeah. different freaking animal there yeah yeah hey and, uh guys i'm gonna the, go and, ahead go ahead yeah. and, and, and the thing is is whenever you get into rifles buy a lot more powder because they use a lot more powder mm -hmm. there you go especially if you get into something big like the 4570 oh. 60 oh, yeah. grains of powder <laughs> 10 times more if you uh look at various loading data you can pick out powders that are versatile in rifle too because i did that when i started and i selected yep. 3031 uh because it it went into so many different cases and i had a bunch of freaking rifles at the time i i, I use ram uh ram tack or ram shot <clears throat> tack for my rifles i found loadings for uh 223 uh 308 seven millimeter mouse or seven five or um three oh three I found it for uh seven six two fifty one or fifty four so I, I have a bunch of that. I yeah have, I have uh I have loads for starting at two twenty three all the way up to forty five seventy with the thirty thirty one. Forty five seventy is not pleasant to shoot with the stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, real quick can, here, uh, guys, I want to get this out before I forget. We do have a super chat over there on the YouTube side. Uh, poor conservative said, just got a cam refund sharing. Poor conservative, thank you. You'll be happy to know that the five bucks is going to go towards reloading supplies. So I want to thank you for that. <laughs> uh, uh, real quick, Mad Sexy has a question. What's the difference between HMR and Bullseye? Can you guys answer that? HMR. And Bullseye? I don't know if he's talking about it's, he's talking it's, about it's powder. Oh, okay. Um, Does anybody know? There are two different kinds of powder. Oh. Uh, so really the only thing you can do is look on burn rates. Um, the closer yeah. they are on burn rates, the more yeah. similar properties they have, but they'll still whip your barrel differently. Okay. Yeah. No matter what, if you are looking for supreme accuracy, just you stick with a, go out, buy a pound, stay, you know, if it feels soft on your shoulder, is it accurate? go with it, buy it. I mean, you start changing powders, especially with the long rifles. It just, that's a whole different ball game with pistols. You could change powders weekly. And as long as you're going fast enough that there's not enough. It, so it'll basically still be more accurate than you okay. out of a pistol. One, one thing I want to point out though, is do not try to use load data from one powder on another. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes, yes, uh, yes. There's only two powders that'll interchange that I've ever run across, and that's 110 and 296. And even those don't agree on some reloading data. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. 
thing so, in each each one ten in that has a very narrow window as far as what your maximum and your or your starting load and maximum load are. Same with bullseye. It doesn't take much for a bullseye to get something going, but if you're a couple tenths over, I, I think bullseye. If I remember correctly, this is pulling out of my head. From a load, a uh, minimum to a high, you're only like maybe 0.4 grains off. So if your powder throw throws a half a grain off, all suddenly you could be in a dangerous area. All and right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and number uh, does mean it's the same. wrap up here real quick. There you yeah. go. Good that, stuff. That, that's different. That's a totally different powder, though. Yep. Isn't it? Yeah. So it's, just because the numbers out there, it's it, it's like saying, "Oh, I have a Chevy car versus a Ford car." Yeah, they're both cars, but they're totally different. Yeah. That's right. Hey, uh, real quick, I just want to thank uh, Gunsnob for joining us and uh, Sandhill Shooter. We're going to go ahead and call it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and let Fine Ape start with the uh, with the adios goodbyes. Uh, you want to plug a channel or anything you want to let us know? Any any messages before we go ahead and call it, sir? Ah, uh, gee, let's see. <laughs> well, I really don't have been doing too much for uh, video. However, for anyone who didn't watch the closer Sunday nights, 1030 ish Eastern on gunchannels.com, a um, couple weeks ago, I did show what was in the PSA box. However, I just today put up what was in the PSA box up on Instagram. So cool. You guys can go check that out. And I finally got around to putting together a patch panel so i might remember to take a picture of that otherwise i got nothing i really don't put up too many videos so over there on instagram what's your account is it fine ape also it's fine ape 1393 okay cool cool oh yes oh, and i would like to say a slim jim is candy a hot dog is sandwich and keep your guns rolled and your chambers loaded <laughs> right on and man. on the sandwich that is a nice little piece you picked up there from PSA. I'm just checking it on on uh, Instagram. I guess I'm following you on Instagram. I just haven't checked my feed since uh, last night. So, cool, man. Good stuff. Good stuff. All right, sweet. Um, all right, and uh, go ahead, moving on. Foose, anything you want to say before we go? Sport shooters ammunition at gmail dot com. Okay. Hook me up. Um, or I, I I'm your hookup for ammo. I should say. Uh, 100, 125 grain. You're the right you're now. the blue the blue pill pusher. Is that what yes, we're gonna call absolutely. you? Yeah, better than the blue dress peddler. Oh, um, so <laughs> aren't you glad it's not a blue dress? <laughs> so yeah, right, right now I am 125 grain. I'm still developing a load for 147. Cool. Out of my guns, that they, they feel the same pretty much. So we'll we'll see how it goes. Um, I got several thousand of those, and I'll I'll have to hand roll those. So it'll be a little bit uh a little bit more expensive um than you know bullet and all that stuff so i'm not quite sure where i'm at on that uh for pricing but yeah cool sports cool. shooters ammunition at gmail.com hit me up and we'll i'll get you set it up i'll get, get you a quote and go on from there sounds good cool man all right david bowling the kingpin anything you want to say before we close it out bud yeah, thanks for having me. Make sure everybody goes, like, share, and subscribe. Travis P11. Uh, thanks, check them out on gun channels, guntube.org, and uh, Gun Streamer. Yep. Uh, don't forget to check out Rick's Life as I see it today at 3 p.m. Eastern. And I encourage you to watch and hang out on the gun channels chat. It works better than the YouTube chat, and I don't think Rick would mind if you hung out over there instead. So go cook some bacon on your barrel, and after you get done eating that, go have a nap, and then come back over to Rick's Life as I see it, and you're good to go. Exactly. <laughs> you doing right, Rick's man. show, David? What's that? Are you doing Rick's show this afternoon? Yeah, I should be able to make it. If I don't show up, tell him it's because I'd go get the old lady. Okay, no problem. <laughs> All right, man. Okay, Squid. Squid, thanks for joining us, man. I appreciate your contribution to the, the reloading part. I mean, that was, I'm glad you guys were here to help me find the best deals, help the listeners find the best deals as I fall down the reloading rabbit hole. I'm actually tumbling as we speak. But uh, any final words, man, before we call it? Uh, if you've considered getting into reloading but you're intimidated, don't be. Uh, yeah. I know it's all confusing and all the terminology. and uh, it just Once you start doing it, you, you, you really start learning and start asking more questions but there are tons of answers out there you're going to find out it's like anything else in our community there's a lot more opinion 
involved than you know anything else. It's not that one opinion is correct and the other. It's just you like this brand, you like this technique, you like whatever it is. You know, it's just like liking different calibers or or you know what do you why do you primarily go go out shooting or whatever it is that that reloading works the same way. So once you get into get into reloading and once once you start doing it the way that works for you with equipment that you like and uh, it it just becomes second nature and pretty soon you'll be in one of these using all this terminology and intimidating other people I guess <laughs> throwing so, out powder and, codes left and right you know talking about the design of the flake you know <laughs> and th there's the no there's no stupid question in it no not really I mean I mean everybody's got to start somewhere got, you know if, yeah if a reloader is worth its salt worth his salt Dude, you ask a question and we'll we'll give you a knowledge dump. Um, now you know, depending on how new you are, like we may talk to Travis differently than I talk to Squib. Because yeah, because yeah, I'm just getting into of, and I don't yeah. know all the technical terms or mm -hmm. what some things are. I mean, I'm not afraid to ask because again, we got you want to get into it. I mean, it's 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 a knowledge. it's something to consider. Yeah. But it's kind of like this. After you after you ask a question about it, and then you get the particular item, or you try it out. Maybe your buddy's got it, and you go over to their place, and and you go, "Oh, that's it!" And then it's, it's suddenly yeah. the intimidation is totally gone. You're like, "That's all it is." Yeah, that's yeah. all it is. Yep. There there is a safety factor involved to it. But when I hear people talk about, it, they almost make it sound like, "Oh my goodness, I've got this ticking time bomb in my house." No, it's not that dangerous. I mean, obviously, use some use some common sense, which I know is uncommon. And there are some safety things to do, but overall, some of the stuff, uh, it just, I think people are so afraid that it's just, they, they, they've just got this, I don't know, combustible, explosive, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, it, it's, it's, it's fairly stable, people. There's four, th there's four components. Primer, case, powder, bullets. There there's four, four components. All of them are stable. The only time... Yeah that a powder will go off is if you put flame to it. The only time, or electric charge, the only time a, uh, a primer will go off is if it gets hit hard or uh, electrical charge. So it's because they are, they are combustible. Yeah. But to, to be honest, and, and I'm, I'm going to say that I do not recommend this to anybody, but I have been smoke cigarettes while I'm reloading. You ain't going to blow yourself up. Seriously. Again, the gun channel no, I would not, like to remind everybody yeah, that I'm, the information I'm, you're I'm, hearing in this chat is to be used at your own risk. I'm, yeah. <laughs> I'm not encouraging people to be reckless. What I'm saying is if you're afraid uh, that this is just that dangerous, people have yeah. been reloading since the 19th century, okay? And it's, 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 not, it's no more dangerous than getting in your car and driving to work. Yeah. Or, right. or maybe no, I should no, say no, going no. to the gas station and putting gas in your car, maybe. It's Dri less driving, driving a car is more dangerous. Probably more, more dangerous. But... To do. There's more variables into every yeah. second of driving yeah. a car than a reloading a. Uh, okay, so maybe I should say refueling your car. It's about as dangerous <laughs> as refueling your car and doing on an your oil cell change. phone. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but, one, but not... yeah, I, I don't want that to be a, a, a thing that, that says no. make somebody go, I just can't do this. I just, no, not, it's. it's you know. Advocating people to smoke while they're reloading. That's not the point. We're advocating That's... that you smoke. No, no. I'm just saying yes. that. No, you should not smoke. Go it's smoke. Start smoking. It's probably dangerous now than it was back in the black powder days, which so, yeah. was full explosive. So, yeah, mm -hmm. so black powder is, an ex is, a, is explosive. Smokeless powder burns fast. Rapidly. That's it's all it the does. same. It, it's it, the same. Tony it, tends to smoke cigars while dealing with smokeless powder. <laughs> and it needs pressure to burn faster. If you just take and you put, I, I could go out and right now, pour a pound of powder on the ground, light it. Yeah, it'll be gone in a second, second and a half. Maybe yeah. a little bit longer than that, yeah. depending on how, what design or whatever I draw. But if I put that into a, a metal container and light it, oh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to blow up because it, It'll burn. It burns yeah. faster under pressure, and it creates more gas. Which, All it which does brings out a, a curious thing about movies: is those guys who are taking a keg of black powder and stretching it out there for like using as a wick. That's smokeless. Barrel. That's bullshit. No, no. What they're what doing is that smokeless powder. Is what I know using. it. Mm -hmm. They're implying that they're doing it black powder, and that's right. bullshit. Because it just right. all go up at once. Right. Absolutely. 
Okay. All right, so we're going to go exactly. and let the Gunsnob say his goodbye here while we move down the line. Gunsnob, <laughs> thanks for joining us, buddy. I hate to butt in like that, but you, I got to give you a chance to plug the channel and uh, and say a few words before we jump out of here. Go ahead. I got to go. See see you guys. All right. Thanks a lot, Foos, man. Appreciate it, man. Take care, buddy. Gunsnob, anything you want to let us know? Are we still here? Gunsnob, you with us, buddy? Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, go ahead, brother. Okay. There we hey, go. Anything you want to say? We're we're doing our outros here. So what's uh anything yeah. you want to say before we go, bud? Yeah, thanks for having me. And tonight I should have a show if I'm home in time. We're taking a little road trip today, but I should cool. have a show at nine PM Eastern. Sounds good. Sounds good, man. All mm -hmm. right. And uh where can we find you at over on YouTube? Gunsnob is your channel. Uh yes. you elsewhere? Where else can we find you? Gunsnob. All right, man. Cool, cool. Thanks for joining us, man. I do appreciate you jumping in here. And anytime you want to join in, just shoot me a shoot me a message and let me know if you're available, and we'll send you a link. So, go good. Awesome, man. All right, uh, Tony. Anything you want to say before we close out, bud? Well, I've never actually been at a loss for words in my life. <laughs> but now you are. Uh, yeah. <laughs> just check out Rick's life as I th see it at three o'clock today. I think it's three o'clock central. Yep. Well, I don't remember. Thanks for uh, having three, me. Uh, three o'clock yeah. Eastern time, two o'clock Central, if I'm not mistaken. Is that right? Yeah. Rick's Eastern, Eastern yeah. is the only time zone that matters. Yeah, until the sea level rises, then you're going to come moving with us. So, all right. And uh, Travis, you want to get you a pound <laughs> of tiger to start with. There you go. There you go. I'm all set to go. Pound of tiger's blood. No, that's all right, man. Get my powder going and get set up. Hopefully, maybe by next week, we'll have a... We'll maybe do a live stream next weekend. I don't know. We'll see if I can get my get my bench set up and uh, start to get everything out and go through everything. And I'm ready to go, man. I'm ready to rock. It's going to be good. Unless, unless you're going to start with rifle, then Tiger's probably not the best No, choice. no. It, it'll just be, we're just going to keep it simple, 9 millimeter. Just learn the basics and go from there. So got plenty of new brass and prep brass from Squib and bullets. And I got the powder for that right now. I just need to get my bench set up. So, All right, man. Well, hopefully, Tony, you'll be with us next week too, man. Um, that is unless you put too much... What we're going to do, you're going to pack 50 BMG powder in a chapstick container as a case. Is that what the plan is? No, no. It's going to be smoking. Tony, 296, chap, chap Tony 450 AAC Smackdown Blackout. Is that what it is? <laughs> nah, only rimmed, man. Only rimmed. There you go. Uh, real quick, guys, Sean Pottery wanted me to remind everybody, yeah, we need to give them a little shout out. Over on Gun Channel side, they do have the daily lobby you can join in. Over 40 hours a week, you can jump into gun chats if you want to. So do go check that out. You can always post questions in the chat also on gunchannels.com. Uh, so there's a lot of neat things going on over there. Do check it out. So those guys do yeah, put their time in. Unfortunately, I'm at work, so I can't join in a lot of those lobbies. I wish I could uh, participate more. lobby but... run by Mr. Knives. Yep, almost. Mr. Knives hey. and Sean is out there. And Tony, you're in there too sometimes, right? Yeah, I'm in there some most days. Cool, cool. Depends Sounds on how good. noisy Pawnery is. <laughs> oh, Mr. Knives, there he is. There's the Knives. man right there. Chocolate. That's my Mr. Knives impersonation. So awesome. <laughs> good stuff, man. He is a ninja turtle. He is a, he is a retired ninja turtle uh, on the side. And in his main time, he does he cry a lot? Why are his eyes always why has he always got tears in his eyes? Is it because he can't get out of California? We gotta get him out of California, mm -hmm. guys. We gotta save fine ape and so out of fine California. Ape. Got to save knives, not finite. My bad. So, well, gee, right. yeah. now, we know, now we know how you really feel about me. You're good. <laughs> finite, you're fine. I, hey, finite, I don't even know what state you're in. So I, yeah. All right. Cool. Well, man. I can, I can take solace in the fact that I am North of you. Therefore, anytime I shit, it'll flow down into your state. Canada. Wow. I'm when, about... Wait, when did, did we, when did we annex Canada? Because if that happens, I'm <laughs> my future, and I I'm think I need to go buy some uh, stock in West Tech Industries. Well, I'm looking forward to your poo. So thank thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. I do stay out of the uh, Missouri River, though. So uh... while I'm thinking about it, I would like to mention the fact that our counties, in so far the southern part of the state, are flat out coming out publicly telling our government that they're not going to enforce any new gun control laws that violate the second amendment yeah yeah it's getting ugly out there guys you do need to be active i mean you need to get out there and get the word out you need to obviously we mentioned this before you need to write your representatives you need to watch who you're voting for uh you know get get together with with friends and family make sure that these issues two-way issues man i mean it's god the stuff that people are proposing is just ridiculous but 
Oh, that's just crazy. So anyway, all right. So that was the uh, that was the panel, guys. Thanks for joining us. I do appreciate it. Um, over on the Gun Channel side today, we did have the Kingpin over there. We had Dead Horse joining in with us too. Thank you, sir. Uh, Paper Plane Crash was also over there. Uh, Ohio 45 ACP was there for a while too. So hopefully I didn't miss anybody on the Gun Channel side. YouTube side, man, we got the usual suspects: Mad Sexy, Rob D, Poor Conservative, Jorge Cortez, uh, Sean Pondery. We had Midnight Range joining us. Rich White. Uh, 44 Blue Seals out there, AC-97, SS, Pawn, Ozzy Orsborn. Hopefully I don't miss anybody. I'm sure I probably will. Uh, we had Donna G joining us from Canada. Welcome, Donna. SS, Pawn, Black Cat Outdoors, uh, Poor Conservative. Hopefully that's about it. Chihu uh, Chihuahua Chokers out there, Cal Bears, 32. Special with us today, too. Jason Stewart. Man, good crowd. Frank Hellman out there. Frank the Tank joining us. Tacos and French fries, yes, please. And I think that's probably about it. So Midnight Range. Uh, TM was the first guy to join in. But uh, anyway, guys, this has been Caliber Corner, episode number 80. Thank you for joining us. We had a lot of fun today. We just kind of babbled a bit, but then we also covered some very serious topics. Just had a good time. But please join us next week, Saturday morning, 8 a.m. Central Time, the time zone that the world revolves around because the world is flat. Just kidding. And uh, we will see you guys next Saturday. And uh, as usual, I just want to say adios, Felicia. Te amo. Reloading is cathartic. If Felicia pees in your refrigerator, you might want to consider giving her the bird to sleep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Felicia.